is the Glass Cannon Network. Good evening, everyone. It's Friday night. My name is Troy LaValle. And it's time for chaos. I am so excited that I have acid reflux burning a hole in the back of my throat. This is not a bit. I might throw up. Uh, That's how excited I am. Uh, This has been uh, a project that I've wanted to do for a long time, and I can't believe that we're recording the first episode right now. We are going to be building characters tonight uh, for a a story that is often considered the greatest role-playing game campaign ever written across all systems. Uh, That is, of course, uh, Masks of Nyarlathotep uh, for the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Uh, I've run about 15, less than 20 hours of Cthulhu at this point, and I'm just obsessed with it. So when I was thinking about the next project that I wanted to do, I knew I wanted to do Cthulhu, and since I'm completely incapable of doing anything in moderation. (laughs) Anything in moderation. I decided to do the most epic, renowned, and longest campaign ever written. Say the name again. Masks of Nyarlathotep. Nyarlathotep. Okay. Are we gonna? Yeah, we we're gonna nail down a pronunciation. You don't have to say that, right? Uh, like I bet we're never he's to say that. <laughs> this is it. This is. I read this whole friggin' thing here. Uh, this we're gonna be giving this away yeah. uh, later tonight. Oh. But yeah, Nearlithotep. I wasn't sure until I had a call with Chaosium, and they said it like that. Mm. But they're also uh, mostly from Australia, so that might just be their weird way of saying it. Uh, it might be Nearlithotep. Right. Um, however you pronounce it. It's going to mean your doom. Uh, I am so excited and 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 joining me on this on this journey. I mean, we're going to be playing this uh, for the next uh, twelve years. No, that's not true. Uh, we can we can finish this quicker than that. Um, but but joining me on this on this journey is what I what I'd like to call a dream group. Because when I just, when I was assembling this cast, because I assemble the other cast too, and I don't really care if I'm not involved. No, it's not true. <laughs> uh, when I was assembling this cast, I had one criteria in mind. I was like, I want a group of people that I just really, really want to hang out with. And the good thing about that is it immediately eliminated all of the f- other founding members. <laughs> <laughs> so rude. Send your hate mail to Troy Lavalle. <laughs> Got to get that out of the way. hell. <laughs> it's a safe space. Go for it. <laughs> and then I called these guys, and they were available. Um, but this is this is really a, a dream group. Not since P. Diddy put together Danity Kane. Indeed. Whoa. Whoa. We have wow. made the band. We have made the band. <laughs> Has there been such a cavalcade of superstars? <laughs> like this group. Who's going to be the Aubrey O'Day? We'll never know. <laughs> So let's meet these rascals, huh? Um, First up, she is uh, a resident queen of cosplay here, uh, which means that I'm going to do everything I can to ensure that she plays a rodeo clown. (laughs) Just so she has to dress up as that. Nora Abraham, everybody! Nora! Hello! Thanks thanks for choosing me to be in your your favorite all-time cast. Uh, I will say you get nervous acid reflux. I get nervous burps. Oh, um, <laughs> I'll just put mm-hmm. that out there. Sorry for any nervous burps <laughs> that you may hear initially. Oh man. If um, I burped right now, it would just be projectile vomit. <laughs> off my camera. That's how I feel. right no, now. I get like little mini micro burps, like little teeny oh. tiny ones. I'm just like, Oh no, but that they subside, but I'm excited. This is good. This is how we're going to get to know each other. Really Wait, stir the just, pot. I will say, I think it's very rude that you called this show Time for Chaos. I, it should be implied. Don't just throw that out there in our faces that we are going to be thrown into chaos. Just kind of, you know, you're supposed to softball it in there, not just 
make it the show title. Yeah, that's a spoiler, really, if you think about <laughs> it. Yeah. Now you we know. know. The irony of this is that we're creating characters that will be dead within a few weeks. Uh, Why? Or, Why do you have to be like that? Or permanently insane. <laughs> and I'm not just big Troy, uh, uh, exaggeration Troy. Like, these characters, no one survives. Like, this is the hardest, craziest adventure. And uh, oh. so there's going to be a real, real... Uh, Death count. Well, not even death. Death would be kind of preferred uh, versus some of the horrible things that happen in this. I should warn you, if you haven't uh, watched a lot of Cthulhu or played a lot of Cthulhu, this is an adult game with like adult stuff that I sh I was reading. I was like, I'm, I'm too young to be reading this. So <laughs> you might find that like this isn't your jam. Uh, but I'm this consider this my my warning. Uh, you know, I want to make sure my my players and I will we'll talk behind the scenes, make sure that everybody feels safe. That's obviously important. Um, but uh, this is a this is a fucking scary game. Uh, and Nora, you've played uh, a decent amount of Cthulhu. Obviously, we I played have. together. I've had I've had characters die, and this is the only game where my characters die. I, I have a good streak in other TTRPGs. Cthulhu, <laughs> not so much. You're very squishy, but that's the fun of it. That's the so yeah. I'm um, I hate all of it, so <laughs> I'm excited to play. But uh, I, I hate I hate creating a character that I love, and then oh, they die. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Well, I'm excited to see this. This rascally rodeo clown <laughs> that you come up with. Uh, I don't know that we settled on that. Uh, no, I think that's a good... Right, what does the chat say? Oh, it's a rodeo clown. <laughs> no, it's going to pull up. Uh, next up, uh, he, is, he is on the fast track to be the 2022 Glass Cannon Rookie of the Year. Uh, he's the man of a thousand voices mm. in one face. It's Mr. Ross Bryan, everybody. Uh, yes, hello, Troy. Thank you for for summoning me like the like the wonderful P Diddy that you are to this, <laughs> to this crew, and also for mm. by 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 leading off with uh, uh, evocations of acid reflux and tiny burps that were that were just edging into the the um, uh, squeamish Lovecraftian body horror that yes. I'm sure we'll all be drowning in soon. Yes. No oh, doubt. you'll be you'll be hoping for acid reflux oh, burps. You shall pray for acid reflux where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> Ross, how does it feel to be universally loved by everyone in our network? I don't and know, I, Troy. I don't know. Um, I ask that because uh, the people who started this network are pretty much hated. So I'm curious what it feels like <laughs> to be in, enjoyed. No, you, uh, oh, no. I mean, because every, I haven't wearied them yet. Everything we throw at you, you just, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm jealous of your talent. And so I, when I knew that I wanted to do this, I was like, I hope Ross is available. And you were. Oh man. I'm so, so, so stoked to, to do this. Um, and thank you, Troy, for having me. Uh, like, yeah, this, this was pretty much the game that kind of made me fall in love with, tabletop role-playing like when i first started playing with like jared and clint at mm -hmm. all um this is the one where it really clicked and i was like oh yes this is this is real fun we're building these these imaginative uh universes wherein we 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 go quite mad, quite mad. yeah you know nothing against D D 5e or pathfinder or any of these other big role-playing games but there's something about cthulhu that just fits this medium so much better because it's it's collaborative storytelling like any of these games are but like the rules you never feel like the rules get in the way of the story because even when you fail horribly at a role it only progresses the story forward now one could argue you could do that in a DD game too but like you could fail and then the boss just kills you here it's just the emergent storytelling i i'm i'm excited to see what we do with it uh Next up, uh, we she was on pretty much every single episode of New Game Who Dis last year. We call her the queen of New Game Who Dis, and I'm so excited uh, that she's joining us for this. Give it up for Kate Stamis. Wow, mm. hi. You said my last name right. Wow. You know what? Uh, the only reason I knew that is because I was watching uh, a New Game Who Dis. I was uh, editing it, and you were on it, and I wasn't running it. And you said your name Stamus, and I was like, I've been saying Stamus the whole time. Everyone says that, And yeah. she never corrected me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got weirdly mad at you. No, uh, but it's Stamus. <laughs> Stamus. But then you got not mad at me, and now I'm, like you said earlier, we're all one of your favorite people. Favorite. And it's canon now. That's what it is. It is canon. Um, I love it. Tell us about this aquarium that you're in right now. Are you at, is this the Brooklyn Aquarium? That I thought opened? this is what we were all doing. We're not all doing this. It's an underwater oh. adventure, yeah. right? Yes. Dagon, Dagon is, is 
<laughs> under underwater. It's no? the under the sea dance from Back to the Future. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, we were all talking pre-show about how your the depth of field of your camera really makes us all look like amateurs, and it's mm -hmm. uh, borderline insulting. Yeah, and it's really no. the opposite. I am probably the most amateur, but I have fancy equipment and my husband's computer behind me that makes me look really good. So you make up for it with the tech. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I'm so excited. And what I like, uh, I mean, of the many things that I like about you is being a fellow Virgo, I know that you have memorized the rules of Call of Cthulhu. And so I can lean on you when I forget them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, fellow obsessive compulsive. I'm excited. Uh, and finally, a new face to the network. This is a man... Who go? I go back with this gentleman twenty five years. Oh my god! Yet we have not hung out in any way, shape, or form <laughs> in over twenty four years. Don't say it like wow. that, man. That's not cool. That's true, but that's the truth, and it's I know, not. It's crazy. It's not. I'm excited it's, for it to not even feel like that. I'm excited to, for it to feel like nineteen ninety seven all over again. It's gonna be great. Well, when we were talking before, uh, you know, we, we, you uh, you decided to join up with us. Uh, I was saying that. This is just going to be such a great way to rekindle our friendship because we were very, very close. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, he just finished up uh, seven seasons on NCIS New Orleans. Uh, my my good friend, and I think you're going to fall in love with him as well, Rob Kirkovich. Um, Hi. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Troy, thank you for having me. This is obviously, I've never done any kind of uh, uh, streaming like this before. It's something I was really excited to do, and it's like serendipity because I honestly was going to, the show wrapped, and I was like, what am I going to do now with my life? And then uh, it was like, I should hit up Troy. And then before I even had a chance to email you, you sent it to me. So it was like, it was great. I can't wait. I, I, I refrained from having the, I, I do have them upstairs, some high school yearbooks. Maybe they'll come out later. I've got some wow. sweet pictures of me and Troy How in really high school it. theater. A little 12th night. A little me <laughs> killing you as Dracula. Your Dracula. Oh, that's oh, oh, classic. Yeah, that's right. You yeah. took the stake into I'm my heart. All of five foot two, real tiny. <laughs> it really <laughs> sprouted like a. I needed bee. like two arms to hold the stake up. Um, you've got a sweet widow's peak Dracula action going on. Yeah, the uh, widow's peak isn't great. there anymore. This it's is really the Patreon just, content we subscribe to. Oh, we yes. got that. We've got Shakespeare. <laughs> There's so many stories. That should be yeah. That should be a oh tier. God. Yeah. In Patreon is. Like, do you want to hear about how I cut Troy's face open on stage in front of an entire audience? More so we want to see the photos. The photos <laughs> also will be present. We, we do have plenty of photos. I forgot about those. And now I regret. <laughs> I'm here now. It's too late. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, I don't think the rest of them can hear me. The only reason I'm doing this show is so that we can rekindle our love. That's what, stage. yeah, I was just going to speak to you directly the whole time. Yeah. Gonna, um, okay. I just, I don't have a lot of friends anymore. I've lost touch with everyone I've ever known. And so this is so lovely. I'll just have to start a show now for oh. every friend that I've lost contact with. Yeah, old years. friend who this. Yeah, I mean, old, <laughs> there it is. Yeah. <laughs> You're ready to keep already. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm excited, Rob. One last question, uh, and this is a serious question. Yeah. Did you ever talk to Scott Bakula about Quantum Leap? All the never time. come up. All okay. the time. Uh, but I, uh, when I first met the man, he was very great. Uh, and uh, I didn't want to come at him with a Quantum Leap thing because I, I felt like that was too obvious. Yeah, you don't want to open with Quantum Leap. Yeah, I didn't want to open with Quantum Leap because it's like, that's, that's like kind of been done. Mm -hmm. So I opened with uh, uh, Necessary Roughness which is a movie he did mm -hmm. where he plays a like a 35-year-old man who's pulled back into college football to be mm -hmm. the quarterback of the team. It's a phenomenal uh, film. A team of which cons you know it consists of uh Kathy Ireland is the uh -huh. kicker. She's the kicker. Uh there's a guy who only does karate mm -hmm. and uh gets penalized for like karate kicking people in the face. It's based on a true story, I think. No, okay. just, Robert Loja is there screaming his head off and thinking he's going to die every time he speaks. <laughs> you know, he's just guttural. Um, anyway, that's what I opened with. Uh, and uh, I think he respected me all the more for that. And that really paved the way for a wonderful, <laughs> beautiful friendship. I just want to know everything about Quantum Leap. They're bringing yeah. it back, I think. Uh, they are, yeah. Uh, but you took this job over the reboot of Quantum Leap. And I yeah, they called it. me and it was basically this or that. And I was mm -hmm. like, I'm over being on television at this point and having a career I can uh, 
kind of rely on. Uh, so I wanted to just get in this space. I'm pumped. Just get into the very small screen. Uh, yep. Well, I'm excited to have you here. This is going to be a, a real a real love journey here, and and you're in such wonderful company. Wait till you get to know these people because I've had the pleasure of working with them now for uh, some of them for over over two years at this point. Well, it's and, great. I've been watching a lot of the old yeah. streams and stuff, so it's not like I know you guys, but I'm very excited uh, to work with you guys. It'll be fun. Uh, we're we're gonna have fun, and we're gonna start with a, a giveaway tonight. Uh, Brennan, our main man, Brennan is in the chat. We're gonna give away one of these box sets. Uh, this has both books, all seven hundred pages of the adventure, along with a keeper screen and the over three hundred handouts that come with this adventure. Uh, we can only give it away uh, to people in the continental U.S. because were I to ship this outside of the country. It would cost three hundred dollars because this thing is so heavy. Uh, but I will be bringing it to the post office myself, which means this is probably going to take months. But just follow the chat, and uh, maybe you'll win the masks of Nyarlathotep uh, box set. The players, I should let you know, you are not eligible to enter because I don't want you to read it and cheat. Uh, <laughs> not cool. What? One other bit of business before we jump in. This is obviously happening on Friday night. This is going to be a, a Friday night show, our uh, our version of Full House. And uh, but next week, uh, the the first real episode beyond Session Zero is going to be on Thursday night because we're going to be uh, in the West Coast. Uh, we have a show in Portland on Wednesday and in Seattle on Friday. We don't want to play against ourselves for a big uh, show like this. So this show will be on Thursday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Otherwise, it'll be on Friday nights. Enough of this jibba-jabba. Let's get to creating these characters. Now, I told you guys via email, what the hell did I tell you? I told you, <laughs> I don't like, know either. <laughs> you, I wanted you to come in and like be really, have a couple of concepts, but be ready to change them and flow or like just be completely open to what maybe have the stats kind of lead you to the occupation or the concept. Um, so I don't know where everyone is at. I know uh, some of you are maybe have more solid ideas than others, but we're gonna figure it out together. The one caveat that I told you in email is that whoever you build needs to have some reason to have traveled to a foreign country to take part in an expedition. And you, you could play any occupation and find that reason but just keep that in the back of your head as you create this if you're a, a waiter at a, uh, a paris restaurant what are you doing in the wilds of some country on some expedition you can still be that waiter but remember you're going to have to think of what that connective tissue is beyond that it's time to jump in and i've given you the option of rolling for your stats or doing the point by I get the sense that everybody wants, uh, we got some gamblers in the group here. You guys all want to roll for your stats. Is, is that true? Am I assuming? Yeah, I think yeah. I want to. I don't know. Listen, I Let's heard what you said <laughs> in the email yeah. about being flexible. Mm -hmm. And like my brain won't let me. I have this I idea and I want to do it, even though they're probably going to die. Yeah. So with the point by, you could shape that idea. As yeah. opposed to being at the uh, at the whims of the dice, if you want to be a uh, in a twelve foot tall ice giant, and you roll <laughs> a twenty strength, that's not going to work out, Kate. Um, well, listen, I, I, it's totally up to you. If you want to do the point by, you absolutely can. Uh, if you want to roll dice, hey, you know what? It seems like everybody else wants to roll dice. If you want to roll dice and then you decide I don't like it and want to throw it out, your backup plan can be the point die. Oh, I love okay. that. You like that? Yeah. Yeah. That's, from, that's only for Kate. Sorry. No. Oh, anybody, uh, uh, no. anybody can do that. Berries. <laughs> what berries. page is is like the point buy on a specific page? I was trying to find it and I can't. You know what? I have the the keeper rule book. <laughs> I read oh. the keeper rule book, <laughs> not the investigator handbook. And so our pagination is a little different. But uh, I believe you get four hundred and eighty points or something like yeah. Four, excuse me, four hundred and sixty points that you have to spread amongst the eight characteristics. Uh, nothing can be lower than fifteen or higher than 90 uh, at character creation. And that'll be true uh, 
Well, I guess you could roll higher than that. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But let's say we're all going to roll. And if at the end of it, you either don't like your roll or you kind of shit the bed. Like if you roll three tens, then there's there's a contingency for you. Like, all right, you got all your stats. Some of them are pretty bad. Roll a D6 and then take, or say you roll a four, take those four points, put them anywhere you want. And you uh, you can bring your stats back up. Or you can be like, you know what? I'm just going to do the point by. It was fun, but I'm not a gambler. One thing they say right out the gate is, uh, do low characteristics make poor investigators? And the long and short of it is, no. Everybody likes to min-max. You want to keep your character alive. You want to keep them sane as long as possible. But the story is going to come out of real people. And that's what makes regular Call of Cthulhu as opposed to Pulp Cthulhu so much different than other role-playing games. These are real people. These are real people who are about to be put through the craziest adventure of their life. They're gonna be exposed to things they never thought they would ever be exposed to in their life. They are going to come upon artifacts and tomes that are going to give them superhuman powers or kill them or drive them insane in the process. So don't stress too much if you're like, ah, my stats are so bad. Let's start with strength. Roll 3d6, multiply it by five, <laughs> Shit. and let's just see what happens. You know, this is like classic D&D. &D. The old way was like, all right, let's roll for strength. Here's my strength. Ah, 10. Guess I'm not gonna be a fighter. And you would just go down the roll. That's kind of how we're doing it here. 3d6 for strength. Times multiply what? by five. And then multiply it by five. Okay, okay. Something 75. 75. Ooh. Whoa, also 75. Yeah. Whoa. 30. 35. 35. Oh, <laughs> look at that wiggling. It tracks with my idea. It's fine. Very good. So I got 55. Good. Okay. 55. My favorite number. All right, great. Okay, so strength is set, and we're going to be using uh, Roll20 for this. Uh, we're going to be doing some really cool things from Roll20. I want to shout out uh, Emily Floyd from Roll20, hooked me up with a bunch of cool stuff for Cthulhu and just for Roll20 in general. Uh, I'm, I'm finally uh, going to be upping my Roll20 game uh, with the help of uh, someone amazing named Michael, who you will all meet very soon. But in the meantime, let's move on to Constitution. Constitution's gonna be your, you know, your health, your vigor, your vitality. How will poisons, poisons and diseases affect you? Same as strength, roll 3d6, multiply I rolled it good on this one. by five. 80. 80? Yo. <laughs> All right, Hulk, I guess you're gonna be Hulk. a pro wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a, uh, I'm a gym clown, is what you were, yeah, you know, yeah. just a... <laughs> Getting... 80 for con. Sturdy, this sturdy rodeo clown is coming more and more into focus. That's right, that's right. Wow. Popping out of barrels, eluding bulls, yeah. <laughs> Rob, you're looking unhappy by this role. Because I have to use a calculator. <laughs> yeah. Is okay. that a TI-81? I've TI definitely been using a calculator. I was told role-playing game. <laughs> I'm sorry, yes, this is the only math. I know. Okay, it's uh, 70. It's fine. Oh, that's, that's good. good! Great. Yeah, this was my thing, too, when I first started. It was like, ooh, let, let us delve into a world of magic, imagination, and wonder. But first, do this W2. <laughs> <laughs> Fill this out in triplicate. Uh, what did you get, Ross? I got a um, uh, 45. Okay, all right. Interesting. Okay. And what was your strength again? It was It was 75. Okay, so that's an interesting juxtaposition. Strong, there. not hardy. <laughs> <laughs> Kate? I got a 60. Okay. Respectable 60. You passed. Yeah. <laughs> passed. Is this fitting your concept so far? Yes. That's what the world wants to know. Uh, all right, let's get to size. Size is a little bit different. Uh, let's mix it up. 2d6 plus 6. And then oh. multiply it by oh five. Oh my god. Right. 2d6 plus 6, then multiply it by 5. Okay. And then well, uh, to the second power. If you think about power. it, it's a free 6. You have to roll that third 6. That is true. That's right. That's a, that's a great way of looking at it. And the reason they do that is because they don't want anybody to have uh, a size that is uh, comically low. In fact, I think size and intelligence have a minimum that they need to be... Um, 
yeah, excuse me. Yeah, you have to have a minimum of 40 for both intelligence and size. Um, so hopefully everybody got at least a 40. Otherwise, is I'll it, start panicking. Is it 2d6 plus 6 multiplied by 5? Yeah, as complicated as it possibly could be. Okay. 2d6 plus 6 <laughs> times 5. And uh, are you, aren't you supposed to multiply the 6 times the 5 first? Con- order of operations? Ah, there I'm already confused. There must be a parenthesis around the adding. Yeah, no, just 2d6. Everyone, okay. PEMDOS. <laughs> yeah. nope, throw it out. Uh, have you done Nerdle yet? Everybody's cool on Wordle, but have you played Nerdle? No, it's just no. A, it's a math problem. It's a good time. What? Uh, yeah, so it'll be like, the answer will be 3 plus 7 divided by 4 minus 10 equals this. And so the equal sign and what uh, thing is always different. Nerdle, check it out. Uh, right. Our new sponsor, Nerdle. <laughs> Uh, what did everybody get for size, Nora? Are you seventy? Seventy? Well, who is this hulking brute? I don't know. Ah. I, this is not. Go, this is going against <laughs> what I'm going for. Yeah, it's the star of the rodeo. That's who. <laughs> I don't know. This is Troy's fault. I. This was. A, this is going against what I'm. My concept. <laughs> okay. it's just. As I said this morning in an email, you're the you're the traveling strongman. I think you, you <laughs> abandoned your life in the circus. Thanks, I hate it. Uh, <laughs> Rob, what'd you get for size? Uh, I got a sixty. Sixty, okay. So you're right down Broad Street. You're right down the middle with these yeah. stats. So we need that high int cal- character to come rolling in. Ross, what'd you get? I got a fifty. Okay, all right. And Kate, I got a seventy also. Ooh. All right. Ooh, all right. Interesting. Uh, let's get to Dex. Dex is going to be important. Who's going to be quick? Who's going to be nimble? Who's going to be flexible? And is this uh, is roll, three? roll 3d6 and then divide? Or multiply, rather? Uh, excuse me. Yes, 3d6 times 5. Yikes. Okay. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right. Well, I hope, I hope this, this person... Let's just say I hope they're, I hope they're attractive or something. <laughs> That's really what I'm hoping. That they have something I'm going for. for appearance. <laughs> uh, what did you get, Nora? I'm just fixing 55. my mind. Fifty-five. Fifty-five. Yeah. Okay. Um, Rob, Dex. Uh, Forty. Oh goodness gracious. Yeah, I'm clumsy. It's gonna be great. <laughs> you clumsy, oh clumsy man. Uh, what about you, Ross? Thirty-five. <laughs> Thirty-five. Ooh. Rolled, uh, rolled some snake eyes there in that, uh, <laughs> those D6s. Stay in the back of the bunch. Uh, is, what about you? I'm... It's starting to come together? Yeah, see, mm-hmm, I'm not, mm-hmm, you'll mm-hmm. figure this out. Kate? 65. 65? Yeah. Rolling rocks over there. Glad I can hide behind Kate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up, while I do this on air is going to be appearance who's going to be the real looker of the group uh that's also going to be 3d6 times five don't uh you know don't knock appearance it's the charisma stat of this is like sometimes you can get a lot done on appearance alone oh no (laughs) (laughs) you ugly oaf (laughs) it's not good uh rob what'd you get um what is four times five again 20. That's, 20. That's a 20. I'm a horrifying. Oh, a 20 appearance. <laughs> Monculus. That's, that's, <laughs> that's incredible. That's, great. that's wow. great for both the, the character self esteem and my own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm starting to feel this is how God made me. Like, by the way, while we're on appearance for one quick second, uh, I did notice through the rule book, and I take a little offense at this as someone who is just is 40, is uh, they tell you if you're. Once you go past 40, you start taking points off of your appearance. <laughs> and I think that's bullshit. I think that's bullshit. I feel like I've only gotten more attractive as I've gotten older. That's going to stop soon. That is ageist. <laughs> but 40? Come on. Anyway. So you know, says you, know, you, you hit should... your stride before 40. Like a fine one. Not everyone <laughs> peaks before 40. Exactly. <laughs> Although you get more, I think, education points. You do. You do, but yeah. who gives a shit? Who gives a shit if you're ugly? It's a smoke show. And that's your freaking brain. No one's going to want to look at you no matter how smart you are. (laughs) Yeah, PhD, I'll go. Fuck off. (laughs) You know what's funny is they tell you what what a 20 appearance means. (laughs) A 15 appearance is is ugly. It's just ugly. Possibly disfigured due to an injury or at birth. (laughs) 
This is great. That's, that's horrible. Right. Yeah, that's a 15. So maybe yours was just uh, you got hit in the face by a car. Yeah, something. Yeah, just directly. A fa- car in the face. At full speed. All right, so 20 appearance. What'd you get, Nora? 70. 70? Mm, nice. You beautiful Adonis. She's got it all. A girl can't have everything. All right, I need to know what my, my dump stat's going to be like. Something really bad. You should just loan some points to, to Rob at the end of this. Hey, there's always point. The point pie is not a bad idea. Yeah, it's always an option. Look into the point pie. But that's more math. <laughs> it's a lot of math. It is more math. This is why I just didn't want to do it. Yeah. Like, I'll just roll it. Yeah. Uh, this is going quite well for you and uh, Kate. Ross, what did you get for appearance? I got a 50. So, again, okay. like straight down the... In a way, I'm jealous of, of Rob because I'm just like, I'm like, he's average. <laughs> Fades yeah. into a crowd. A 50 appearance is average human appearance. He's so a no. neutral human. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. Above a 90 is one of the most beautiful people you could meet. Natural magnetism. Uh, Kate, what did you get for appearance? <laughs> 50 also. 50. All right. A couple of average looking people to trot around this disfigured. <laughs> Not. A, they're going to look way better than that around me. <laughs> right. It's just, just like by comparison. Yeah. Right. Like... <laughs> by comparison, you're all in the 70s. Uh, all right. Let's get to uh, intelligence. Okay. This is going to play a, a pretty big role in uh, this game. You're going to want to have some smarts. This one is different. 2d6 plus 6 times 5, uh, just like we did size. Man. Oh okay, this is, the, this is the one that I need it to be. That in education needed to be high. Okay. Uh, your, your loaded dice, what did you roll? I rolled very high again. I rolled an 80. An 80? Intelligence? <laughs> Smoke. The dice are hot, which means I'm going to die first. They have beauty and brains. Beauty it's and brains. Oh. Uh, <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, Rob, what did you do for intelligence? I got an 80. I got okay. an 80. All right. Now, turns this character completely around. Oh, big time. 80. Okay, great. Okay. And Ross? 70. So, ooh, it's a smart group. Not shabby. Kate? I got a 70 also. Wow. All right. That is that is very good. Listen, Troy, between now and, and the first episode that we play, if you need me to lower any of these, I will do it because this is not normal for I well this is the this is kind of the risk reward of the okay. of the role system is like some people are going to be superhuman but honestly with this adventure there's no such thing as like my stats are too high this is a killer you just might last slightly longer than your friends <laughs> now I'll probably die first just hmm. given <laughs> well this is going to be this is going to be interesting because I, I don't there are some would, who would say this role isn't that important I think this role is very important. Your power stat, because your power stat determines what your sanity is. So give me 3d6 times five, and if ever you uh, needed to pray to your outer gods, now is the time. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Think somebody's already having a break. Uh, Nora. Have you cheated your way into a high power as well? No, I got a 60. That's pretty oh, good, that's though. still good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah. What must it be like to be you? Oh, <laughs> sounds horrible. I'm just over here with my 30 power. Oh, oh no. <laughs> this poor guy's not going to make it out of book one. Uh, Rob, well, how's your power? It's 50. Just, you yeah. know. All right, average power. Yeah. That's good. Uh, By the Kate? way, that that will be the name of my autobiography. <laughs> average <laughs> power. The Rob no. Gergovich story? Yeah. yeah. With forward by Scott Bakula? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who is this again? <laughs> that's the whole forward. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's the end. <laughs> that's the blur. <laughs> forward by Scott Bakula. <laughs> Who is this again? <laughs> Who am I writing this for? Yeah. Uh, that's a really short anyway. forward. Anyway, uh, love the book, Rick. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> what'd you get for power? I shit you not. I got an 85. 85 yeah. for power. I rolled two sixes and a five. 
You Whoa. guys are nice. gonna like walk into the lair of Nyar Lathotep, and I'm gonna die by stepping on a rake. <laughs> <laughs> Ten extra points just for just pronouncing it correctly. Yeah. Sideshow <laughs> Bobbit. Right. Wow, yeah, right. it is on all the rakes. It is ladies' night here. Uh, it's time for chaos. Uh, this is this is kind of hilarious. This is gonna be a sitcom now. Uh, all right, so let's talk education. Could be important. Could not be important. Depends right. on what this is way you want to want to get a thousand in. <laughs> What's nice is like depending on your age, you can you can improve this score um, because if you're uh, at least twenty to thirty nine, you can make an improvement check for your education, and that's going to happen right after this. But then the older you are, you can make multiple improvement checks because uh, it kind of assumes that you've been through more schooling or you're streetwise or whatever. So uh, this is the one stat you don't have to stress too much about. 2d6 plus 6 times 5. What did you get, Hulk Hogan? 55. 55, okay. Uh, You're too busy working out to go to school. This, I needed the education one to be high. (laughs) Uh, That's okay. Maybe things didn't work out, or make their character a little bit older, and you'll get those education improvements. Yeah, I don't want to do that, though. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, what did you uh, roll for education? I got 50. 50, okay. Uh, Ross? 65. Mm-hmm. And Kate? Raw average, I got a 50. Okay. What this la- uh, group has in spades in terms of size and power, it lacks. In education. So one stat I needed to be high, Troy. Mm. Well, uh, I mean, we're all friends here. I think that if uh, you could, uh, you could flip your size or yeah, your intelligence. Swap it out for well, size. You want to swap it out for size? Yeah. Yeah, because that's a two d six plus six, and any of you can do a swap. Intelligence. Yeah, we're all friends here. Intelligence, size, and education are all two d six plus six. If you want to swap those around because you've got a concept that fits mm. it, feel free. And okay. then the other ones you could swap as well. But size, uh, intelligence, and education, those ones roll a little bit differently. So you can't like switch small, your size mighty. with your power. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's have some fun here. Did anybody have, uh, does anybody have three scores under 50? Um, yes. You do? What if we have two scores at 50? And then two scores under 50. All right, like that's... Did anybody else like that? Me. You I have, have two 50s and a 35. Two 50s and a 35. Okay, so that means you rolled a... You each of you rolled at least three tens. So one of the other uh, things they offer here is like an optional thing just to beef you up just so you don't feel bad right when we start the adventure is modifying your lower world three or more under 10 roll an additional d6 and whatever you roll add those points to your uh thing so obviously you already did the math but like if you rolled an 11 just (laughs) you know what i mean like divide it by five and you'll know what that number was and then add whatever you want to it does that make sense? Wait, and then yeah. multiply by five again? And then multiply by five again. So let's say you rolled, uh, for your 50, that means you rolled a 10. You, mm-hmm. And let's say you roll a four on a D6, you got four point, points you can play with. Let's say, you know what? I wanna put two of those points into that 10 I rolled. So now that's a 12 times five becomes a 60. Now you got two other points to play with. Okay. Got it. I've done my best to make that as complicated as possible. Yeah, I'm sorry. Hmm. I'm, I have I have an intelligence score of 20, so I didn't catch that. Um, all right, well, what? let's all start. Kate, Rob, and Ross roll a d6. Great. Okay, I rolled a three. As did Same. I. Wow. Couple. Great. Um, that means we get to re-roll. Ray. What's a yeah, <laughs> What's a stat? Everybody re-roll. Well, what's a stat, Ross, that you'd like to you'd you'd like to improve? Okay, I would like to improve my. Uh, <laughs> let's say my. Um, Intelligence or okay. dexterity. What's your intelligence right now? The intelligence is 70. 70. Like, I feel like I, 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 gotta, I gotta have something. All right, so if your intelligence is 70, because I am very tired, that means uh, if you divide that by five, that's a 14. So let's uh-huh. take that 14. You could make that a 15, 16, or 17. You just got Understood. three points to play around with. Understood. Once you decide that, multiply that new number by five, and then whatever you have left over, 
you can throw into some other stats. Rob, right. you had a, like a, right. maybe you want to take your appearance up, or maybe you want to play around with this real ugly son of a bitch. It's I up mean, to you. I mean, here's the thing. I don't mind being uh, in the game. I don't mind being ugly. Uh, <laughs> but uh, um, my question is, appearance is what kind of is the equivalent of like charisma, right? Yeah, like you're probably not going to be the face of the operation, and there's nothing you can really do with those three points that's going to change that. Right. Uh, the difference is, will you be shunned in public because you're so hideous? <laughs> so, so get that up. beast out of this restaurant. Uh, that's my son. I think I'll I'll keep it because it okay. feels like a gift in a horrible. It feels like what Lovecraft would want. Yeah, you know? I think so. He has no faith in uh, life and existence. I feel like this is a good reflection of that. Yes, yes. He was a horrible, um, horrible man. Um, the, uh, yes. <laughs> but, yeah, so now you've got those three points. You could just beef right. up another stat that's lower and be like, you know what, I'm playing with house money. I'll make, I'll, I'll kind of max up one of those things that I wanted to max up. You had a decent right. intelligence, make it even better. It's up to you right, guys. Right, right. So I, I'm dividing I, I, it. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Ross. Oh, no, I, I, I've made my choices. But yeah, like, so I basically divided the one I want to alter by five added my selected number of points from that from that three and then re-multiplied by five to get my new numbers so i i, I bumped my dexterity up to 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 a hot hot 47. Ooh, um, nice but i also bumped Is that up jackie my... joiner cursey over there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um went, oh no did you just get hit in the knee by a ball peen hammer <laughs> oh, dexterity's low again uh i and i bumped up my appearance a little bit so i went from a 50 to a 60. Okay. She's slightly above average. All right. It's very um, conceited of you, but I understand. Mm -hmm. Where is as everyone I, at? Like, well, I'm down to just figure out what's like a gap, and then I'll, I can, as long as it's not appearance, I can put it into that so, to balance things out. Yeah, is there anything here? I mean, uh, Nora's uh, got every score above 80, so she can't help you with this. But yeah. Hi, everyone. <sighs> She's a star child. There's Nora is a demigod. So yeah, she's one of the elder gods. Good. She's in to come down. So, she's what we like to call Nyarlathotep's chosen one. Yeah, and, uh, the tentacles will be there next week. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, no, that's a good question, Ro uh, Rob. Like, where where is the party weak right now? Yeah. Uh, I feel like you had two good intelligences. Obviously, don't sleep on power. Mm. Kate Ross and Rob, you might want to toss at least one of those into power since it controls your sanity. But I don't know. I feel like it was, I feel like Kate and Nora are so well rounded that you guys can kind of do whatever you want. I have a yeah, 35 in strength. I, can get up, I was going to put my extra into dexterity. I, think I can get strength. up to 70 in strength if you want to do that. That would help. Yeah. Okay, you know, strength is going to be important uh, if you get into physical confrontations, hand to hand stuff. Also, sometimes opening doors, you're going to want to use uh, your your strength is going to be very important when you're combined. It's like, let's knock this door down. What's your strength and your strength? You combine it and your score has to be a certain number to even get past the strength right, of the right. door. Okay, so cool. that's smart. Great. All right. Great. Um, Question. Yes. We can put that extra points into any of the scores, not just the three that are low. Yeah. Okay, what cool. What we thinking? I Let's was going to put it... Okay. I was thinking of doing appearance, but I think for my character idea, I want to just make... Dex I want to put all three into dexterity and put it from 65 to 80. Okay, great. Um, do it. Circus performer? No, don't tell me. I want to be surprised. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Now we'll talk about, let's talk about age. I know we're not supposed to just, it's impolite to ask, but how old is everybody? Um, because your age is going to affect your size, your strength, and your education. Um, well, uh, this leads maybe to a question for you, Mr. Uh, Keeper. What year is it? Ah, I'm so glad you asked. 1920 something. You know, I meant to look this up earlier today. Uh, it, I think it's 1923. Okay. I think it's 1923. It's definitely 1920 something. Would it be a di if? Should I stress over this? Is like a big difference no, 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 if it's 1924. No, no, no. If you're like, well, true. Imagine like 19 life expectancy just in the 20s <laughs> is roughly the same. Yeah. I have a timeline here, but yeah, I think it's 23. Um, this is, yeah. oh God, I'm so excited to play that. You have no idea. I, I, I spent months reading this thing because I didn't want to even start prepping it until I finished reading the whole thing. And it's like two giant 
high school textbooks. But it is, I felt like I lost sanity reading this thing. It is <laughs> absolutely amazing. And I'm jealous that the four of you get to play this. Anyways, uh, how old is everybody? I think with a backstory I have in mind, I want to make her probably 28. 28, all right. Well, with 28, and this is the thing is, if you're between, if your 20s or 30s, you just make one improvement to your education and you don't take penalties to strength, con, dex, or uh, or appearance like the older you are. It's kind of like the safe route. Okay. Uh, you just take, you make one improvement check for education. And what that means is you roll a D100. If your result is greater than your present education, so basically if you fail the roll, mm-hmm. uh, you add one D10. To your education score. Okay. Uh, no, I passed. I got a 20. Okay. So I don't add anything. That's all right. You're already superhuman. <laughs> not plenty. Ross, how old are, how old are you? I was going to How old the, is Ross? No, how, no your character. I, how old I, is I was, your character? I think this character I was going to answer the exact same way. I think 28. 28. Like, budget, like 20, 29. Okay, uh, then you will just, same as Nora, make one improvement check for education. What is your education score? My education score is uh, 65. All right, so you want a 66 or higher, and if you get it, you'll boost your education. Okay. I got a 64. Oh! Not so close. Oh, you want it to get higher, that's right. Yeah, this is the one time when you want to oh. get higher wow. for for these <laughs> education roles. Man. Just under the... The mockery of oh, uh, hotel. You just you like you couldn't get your degree. And, but uh, no, I th- I know the I know why. I know why. See, that's that's how we make a story. Uh, Kate, how old is your character? I was thinking late thirties. Late thirties, but not forties. No. Okay. Same thing then. One improvement check for education. What's your current education? My current education is fifty. 50! Okay. Go either way. 51 or higher. You got a 50% chance here. I got a 51. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Okay. So the first improvement. Fun. So go ahead and roll a D10. Roll and a D10. whatever you get, you add to your score. It could be a 1 through a 10. Awesome. So that's fun. I got a 0. I got a 10. Oh, that's 10. That's 10. Wow. <laughs> okay. You have a, a horseshoe uh, around your neck for these rolls. Okay, so that's that's going to bring your education all the way up to a 60. Amazing. Speaking. Rob, cool. you've had some time to think about how old is this ugly human? He's, uh, I think he's 39 <laughs> and 11 months. 30, old. <laughs> that's, I, had a, I had a feeling he would be right in that ballpark. He's right up to the edge. Right. Um, well, happy almost birthday. What is your current education? Uh, it's 50 right now. Okay, so give me a 51 or higher, and you'll get an improvement. Uh, only Kate has gotten improvement so far. Uh, yeah, I got, an, I got a 91. Okay, great. So roll a d10 and add that to your uh, current education. I got a 3. Okay, it's all right. You know what it is? It's better than a 2 or a 1. There you go. Thanks. Put it in perspective. That's how I like okay. to look at things. Uh, let's talk about derived attributes. The beautiful thing about Roll20, uh, uh, if you if you purchase the Call of Cthulhu uh, set, you get access to these character sheets and chef's kiss. They do all the math for you. So your sanity points should, should equal your power characteristic. Mm. Your magic points should equal one-fifth of your power. Now, when I ran Bleak Prospect for Nora and Becca and Joe and Matthew... Uh, what was that, seven years ago? Because that's what it feels like. It was last year. Um, wasn't seven years ago? Last year. We didn't give any magic points to the point that, like, I didn't even read the section on magic. So I'm like, I know this is in the adventure. I'm not going to deal with it. Magic points come into play in this story big okay. time. You will be finding books that have like spells to contact the void to like call monsters to your side and your magic points are what you use to cast these spells. You might find a spell that is so far above you that you don't have the magic points to do that. But, and I might be paraphrasing, I think 
you can still cast those spells by draining all your magic points and start eating away at your hit points. So you're like selling your soul in order to enact these rituals. This is high level Call of Cthulhu play that we'll be getting into. Yeah. It is, it is wild, wild. And, and, the, and the magic points again are one fifth of your power? One fifth of your power. Okay. Uh, and, and like any of these stats, we'll have improvement phases, constant improvement phases throughout this adventure where you'll gain sanity, you'll gain intelligence, you, like you'll, you'll, you'll make appearance. your statistics, you'll gain appearance. Right? <laughs> yes. You went with a part on the right instead of the left. I should, uh, can I make like masks? <laughs> like, uh, what was that show, Boardwalk Empire? Remember just the, full, yeah, just full on Janey Jr. Um, or you'll, you'll, you'll make improvements as you go, and one thing we'll have to make sure that we track is like any time you roll a check that you fail during a session, you mark that box, and then between sessions you have a chance to improve that because every time you fail, you have an opportunity to get better at it. So there's like a little downtime between each session where you'll roll and maybe have a chance to improve that skill that you failed on. This game is so beautiful and, and so elegant. what did you say the sanity points was equal to power? Equal to pow. Okay. Pow! And that yeah. goes on, if, you're, if we're looking at the sheet, it's going to go on the right side of the... Yes. Let me the look here. Thing. Yeah, yeah, the array, here. it's like a little... Yes, it's going to go on the right side. I'm not sure... Okay. Why, like, if you look on the sheet, it says 25 out of 13 for hit points. Just look at the right side. Okay. I don't know. Maybe 25 is the maximum amount of hit points a human could ever have. That's the only thing I can think. Mm -hmm. uh, I meant to look that up earlier, but you just have to worry about the right side. And your sanity, you have to enter in yourself. So go ahead and okay. just put your pow in. Um, this, uh, this sheet is not... Not without its, uh, I don't want to say without its flaws. I think there's a reason that they did that, probably because there's different things you can do to change your sanity. Now let's talk about luck. Luck is a cool stat, and I will be using the optional rule for luck in this game in that, let's say you're like, I want to do, I find this ledger. I want to, and you can't make heads or tails of it. And I'll be like, all right, give me an accounting roll. I just need a regular success. And you've got a 40 for accounting. And you roll a 45. And you're like, mother. You can spend your luck points. And with this optional rule, you could spend five luck points to get it down to a 40 so you succeed. Now, luck, eventually your luck will run out. And then between each session, you'll roll to see if you get some of that luck back or if you don't. And so it kind of mimics how at any time throughout your adventure, you might be really, really riding a hot lucky streak or just ice cold, depending on how you use this luck economy. So it's a very cool stat. Whatever you roll here, if you roll low, don't worry about it. If you roll high, don't worry about it because it could fluctuate throughout the game where some days you're riding high with 90 points of luck and you're like, I failed that roll, but you know you need to succeed. I'm going to spend 50 points of luck to make that a, a hard success. Oh, cool. And then next week you only have 10 points of luck. So 3d6 times five, and that's going to be your luck score. Well, 2d6 plus 6. 3d6 three, three times 5. Ah. Is the My book says 2d6 plus 6. How dare your book correct me. Live on air! No, I, <laughs> I, I, you, you could very well be right. I, I'm Maybe just looking at the alternate rule. No, because I'm looking right at the quick, quick reference investigator generation. Do you guys see that as uh, uh, 2d6 plus 6? Oh, you know what? Also in this rule book, the header says roll 2d6 plus 6, but then in the description it's like roll 3d6. Yeah, 3d6. Are uh, you reading the 6th edition rule book, Kay? I found uh, a typo. Who do I all email? Right. Uh, all right. Send an email to Chaosium. I'll, I'll, I'll shoot the email. <laughs> They'll do a full reprint and recall. 3d6 times 5. Right. Who? Okay. Who's feeling lucky? Uh, Ross, what'd you get? We got a 45. 45, great. Respectable? Uh, Kate? Very respectable, I got that as well. Ah, 45. Respect, respect. Respect. Robert? Uh, I got a uh, 60. 60. Mm -hmm. You lucky I son of a gun. A All right. This is so fun. Okay, now your hit points. 
How durable are these people going to be? It equals your size plus your con divided by 10 and rounded down. Think of the minds that create mm -hmm. these games. How did they like play test this enough to be like, ah, figure it out. Divided it's size by plus con five. divided by 10. Yeah. <laughs> So I think, do your sheets do that automatically for you? Yes, they do, so, which yeah. is great. Yeah. Then why are we wasting time talking about it? Let's talk about move rate. Did it uh, calculate your that? move rate automatically or no? Where uh, is that? I'm just yeah. trying to find out where that is. You know, the beauty of move rate is this isn't uh, the, uh, a D20 system and it's like, all right, I, uh, I can, my dwarf oh. can move 20 feet, one box, two box, three box. It's more about like, I need to get from point A to point B. Troy, can I get there? And I'll be like, well, what's your move? Yeah, yeah, sure. Or if you like, look Ugh. under combat, it has con it calculated it for you under that, like their skills, combat backstory. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you can click on those little, uh, what yeah. a beautiful character sheet. Uh, all right, yeah. so. Okay. All right, so, so it already did it for you. calculated for you there, mm -hmm. yeah. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Mine so, yeah. doesn't have a number in it, just has like the placeholder number of eight. <clears throat> oh yeah, mine has eight too. I thought that was oh, yeah. if yeah, your strength out, that might be that might be the default. It, well, oh, if your okay. strength or your dex are equal to or greater than your size, then it's an eight. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Eight is kind of the standard. Uh, if your dex and your strength are less than your size, it would be a seven. Um, and then if it, your dex and your strength are greater than your size, it would be a nine. Um, and then as if, if anyone was in their 40s or older, you start losing a point of mood. I mean, so, what the hell? Rude. So rude. God damn it. <laughs> Good Lord. Yet wildly accurate. I'm faster wildly than I've accurate. ever been. Oh. This truly is a horror game. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, uh, I was looking out the window today and I just fell. <laughs> oh yeah, out the window. My wife was like, "What the hell? Did you, what are you doing?" She was like, "You were just looking out the window and you just fell." I'm like, yeah, no, I just, I literally just fell looking out the window. So <laughs> losing a, a point. Yeah, true story. <laughs> it happened about an hour ago. It's like, did Amazon leave? A oh, I oh, twisted my ankle Troy, I'm in so my sleep. Sorry. <laughs> just woke up one morning and, and, and was hobbled because I somehow <laughs> twisted my ankle while sleeping. So I think deducting one move from your 40s is actually a gift. It's, yeah. it's wildly inaccurate. Yeah, yeah. It's very so generous. So scared to become 40. You don't want to move too fast or fall out a window. You can't. Like, or oh, sleep. Amazon. Oh, or go yes. to bed. It's wiped out. Uh -huh. Oh, God. What's wrong with Daddy? It's dangerous and confusing to me. <laughs> start yelling at clouds and falling out of windows. Ah, my, the high point of my day was walking in the mailbox. <laughs> um, that's where I'm at in life. Ooh, uh, could be some coupons in there. <laughs> <laughs> I should ask, does anybody have less than a 40 in intelligence or size right now? No. Okay, great. No. Uh, they recommend don't go lower than that. And no one's above a 90 or lower than a 15. I know uh, this circus freak is uh, borderline. I'm skirting the line. I'm right there. <laughs> All right, we've done the education. Obviously, when we put your when you put your stats in the <clears throat> character sheet calculated your one half values and your one fifth values for you which is great obviously there's a table in the book um it can get a little pedantic but those are going to be important because if i if you've got a uh, a 70 for power and i'm like give me a power roll i just need a regular success it's got to be under a 70. if i need a hard success it's got to be under 35 your half value and if I need an extreme success, it's got to be under your one fifth value. So it's nice that the sheet does that for you. Again, a very elegant system for a simpler time. Let's talk about, oh my God, is it time? It's is time. It, it's time. I, didn't, I, would love to, I would love to wait, but I think it's time we talk about it. I think it's time we talk about occupations. I'm ready. Okay. And we'll do it right after this word from our sponsor. Which is right now. What does everybody want to do with their life, huh? What do you want to be when you grow up in this fantasy world? I have Nora, you're chomping at the bit. I feel like you're going to dip out of frame and then come up as the character. <laughs> <laughs> My cosplay's ready. I just like, like pan and then pan back. Um, I have something very specific. Okay. Um, hear me out here. 
a postgraduate student of cryptologic research at Miskatonic University with a focus on occult cryptography. That was my major. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, awesome for a number of reasons uh, that I can't tell you, uh, but obviously invoking the uh, Miskatonic University, the fake university of the Lovecraft setting is very smart as well. I love it. I love it. Uh, so you would be based in Massachusetts. That's right. At MANOC. Awesome. <laughs> okay, I really like that. Uh, so what would be the uh, the technical occupation as listed in the book? Is there a student? Uh, yeah, or? student is the very, very basic uh, form of that. Okay. Uh, great. And you'll see as you choose your occupation or you find the one that like kind of matches what your idea is, um, mm -hmm. It's going to have a list of skills. Yep, got it right here. Credit rating, and mm -hmm. then occupation skill points. And we'll get into how those are distributed uh, shortly, but uh, it helps you out in that way in that like, you've got certain kind of like class skills. Your class skills as a student are blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Uh, all right, I like this. So a, once again, a postgraduate student at the Miskatonic University studying a cult, uh, what is it? A cult uh, with a fo like a focus on occult cryptography. Occult cryptography and cryptography is that? That's the study of codes and ciphers. Codes. Oh man, that's great. That's great. Okay, I love it. I love it. I love it. Tough act to follow. So let's put Kate on the spot because Kate, <laughs> you, <laughs> you were the other one that came in. I feel like you had your idea. You were ready to go. Nothing was going to change it. Tell us about this dexterous person you're thinking of. I'm gonna be an artist. An artist? I'm gonna be an artist. My mom wanted me to go to school and do something else. And I was like, no mom, I'm gonna hang out with my friends and get high and drunk and paint and mm -hmm. do woodcuts. So listen, they're gonna be German and they're gonna be really into like, I think I wanna make them like maybe they were part of the Blue Riders, which was like um, a German expressionist movement um, in like the wow. 1910, 1915. Um, when you told us of like, oh, we're gonna play Call of Cthulhu. And then like, I thought about like what I would wanna be. For some reason, I thought about an artist and I thought about one of Kirchner's paintings. That's one of my favorite paintings ever of one of his like Dresden scenes where it's just like neon, and like in a book, it doesn't look like this, but when you see it in person, it's just like overwhelming and it's creepy the way that he drew it or painted it. And part of me was like, oh, be like an artist who is a German expressionist who like, maybe there's something like loose up there. And that's why they're painting these like dark cryptic things of like ordinary scenes. And also, you always have a little bit of you in every character that you make, whether you want to or not. And I majored in art, so. This is a, a very strong start. This is fucking awesome. I've never heard of the Blue Riders. <laughs> Kandinsky was a Blue Rider. Um, der, der Blau Rider. Oh, oh, I said it wrong. So Kandinsky and then they were the Blue Riders. I meant um, uh, the bridge. It's D. Brook. Um, they were the German Expressionists. The Blue Riders were like the French Expressionists and they got a little abstract and stuff. Ah. I was kind of going back and forth between that, but I didn't want to do a French accent. <laughs> Did you go to MoMA recently? It appears they're doing a uh, De Bruck uh, exhibition at MoMA as we speak. They are? Guys, field trip. Let's oh. do it. Oh. Give me a chance yeah. to leave. Montage. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Quick, oh. quick montage of us at the moment, <laughs> and it's like Bohemian that scene montage. from yeah. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, where we're all just watching the painting. Okay. Uh, I can show you the painting. I have it. I don't. I don't have it. I have. Uh, yeah. I you got have the this original. Book when Please I do. went and saw the Kirchner exhibition, probably nice. at MoMA, I bought this book, and I was like so broke, but I bought it anyway. It was probably like seventy dollars. Wow. And this is the painting. Yeah. Oh. Look how creepy that little girl is with her bonnet. It looks oh, like a mouth yes. and teeth, and it's so dark, I but also so it. bright at the same time. Yes, so something is haunting their yes. dreams in a yes. way, like maybe something from beyond the dark tapestry is entering into mm -hmm. this German expressionist <laughs> painter. Holy shit, I love it. Uh, Ross, where you at? 
Ross, correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like you came in, mm -hmm. had a couple ideas, mm -hmm. but you were kind of in the, let's see what happens. And as these roles started to go, this has evolved. Yes, I am. Yes, the, picture, the picture is coalescing. We have average size, average dexterity, um, uh, like a, a better than average appearance, like decent education, decent intelligence, uh, and but a, but a, but a low constitution. This 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 is tells me that this is a person who's maybe a little bit uh, dissolute or uh, um, or uh, not as is is has some physical power, but maybe not the oomph to to use it. And um, and so I think uh, what we're dealing. I'm picking from the book. Uh, the occupation of dilettante. Nice. Um, so I'm I'm thinking like a like a second son of like like minor aristocracy. It's like courses set, go to university, get a humanities degree, uh, then start like tending the the estates. Um, but then of course war breaks out. So uh, he that's this is the reason why his education is interrupted. Because because all good folks um, and and the, and this means that he would be uh, um, English and would go to go to war um, so as not to be cowardly and uh, <laughs> got got wounded hence the hence the uh, loss of constitution sent back and I think that wound is also a little mental hence his low uh, power and mm -hmm. low sanity. And maybe spend a little time in a in a hospital like uh, the Craig Lockhart convalescent hospital, where some of the war poets like Siegfried Sassoon and Wilfred Owen were, and uh, has got out. And and a lot of those guys who survived World War One, like like scattered to the the four cor the, the corners of the, of the empire. And uh, it's like let's uh, let's climb Everest because uh, um, uh, I don't have a way of really processing this trauma. So let's just do dangerous <laughs> things. Um, and, Both uh, for the lungs, you know. Yeah, yeah. Both for the lungs. Low, uh, got the sheriff had to take me up the mountainside. <laughs> yeah, so it's um, it's uh, it's that sort of uh, that sort of of energy. <laughs> Oh my God! It started out sounding like Buster Bluth, the rich second son that was just going on expeditions, uh, but now it's uh, it's much darker. Uh, they love this. on something called Hero Squad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have this Miskatonic University graduate student of cryptology, uh, a German expressionist painter, an artist in general, and this uh, British dilettante veteran. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking like it's almost like a, it's like a cracked version of like a Robert Graves and uh, and, and yeah, working with a German. So like, hmm. oh, that's got to be fun. Had a um, bit of trouble with the Bosch, but uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, <laughs> we'll see what you. Uh, we'll see if we come to an accord. Yeah, I imagine the artist. Uh, how, how jingoistic is the uh, German expressionist painter? Jingoistic. It's like. Uh, isn't that like overly patriotic or like yeah, like uh, proud of being German? Oh, proud of being actually, German. Um, Hitler said that the paintings that Kirchner made and the De Brook group um, were like awful. Degenerate. He like hated the de degenerate. So I don't. I think that's that's most as that gets. <laughs> All right. So there might be there might be a chance uh, for them to get along. Perhaps a love story. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just stirring the pot. Uh, mm. Rob. Where are you at with this crazy? Man. I mean, this is you're the wild card. You're the Charlie Day of this, I think. So, so I'm the two things I was thinking about. Now I didn't really like uh, uh, look at deep at the, what the the stats were that they would rely on, and they both seem to be uh, about appearance. Uh, so I need some help here. I, I was gonna go either con man. Um, Ooh. Had an idea about a guy who uh, had uh, married a much older widow with the plans it's like when she dies i'm getting the inheritance here but uh and i don't know if this steps on any story ideas but maybe she's just like not dying <laughs> she's like <laughs> super old and continues to live on and he's getting more and more like what is going on here um and i don't know if she it's because she's involved in some interdimensional cultist whatever that's prolonging her life or whatever oh um, interesting so that was sort of where I was going, although now he's um, horrifying to look at. So I didn't know if, I didn't <laughs> know if maybe after, 
after marrying her, he gets kicked in the face by a horse. <laughs> He's like helping her on the horse, like, yes, whatever you want, my darling. And then, you know, gets like, so now he's extra resentful because he was a con man who relied on a lot of like, e, and now that's gone. And he's still not made any money. I love this. Mm. Like you, he got married for opportunistic reasons. It's like the old, the old bat's gonna die any day now, and it's just been a living hell of getting kicked in the face by horses. Yeah. <laughs> like, the cops are like, then. "Yes, no problem, uh, my sweet. I'll go ahead and repair some of those shingles." Yeah. Like, yeah. the roof. <laughs> yes, I'll sweep the chimney. What could go wrong? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but now, but I don't want to necessarily, uh, you know, uh, that I don't know if that works with the mechanics of the game. Oh, I think it does. I absolutely think it does. I mean, it's kind of amazing. It's like this inadvertent long con. And now your con game that relied on your looks is over. And so this expedition to leave is a perfect excuse uh, for you to, to get away from it. And then maybe she'll die while you're gone. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I like it. And I like that it kind of plays against what you would normally think is like, oh, this debonair con man. Right, because it could be fun if he's still relying on old habits uh, where he thinks he can pull something off, forgetting that he is missing half his face or whatever. Like, yeah, you know, he's like, don't worry, guys, I got this. Uh, let me saunter up to the bar and everyone's just like sliding away. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> not how this used to go. And he's also that's making him more resentful about his situation because he's like, I don't even have, I don't even have my looks, man. Um, he could so. still be like a great talker though, you know, because you could put a ton of points into charm. Like he has all of those skills, but now, you know, you said earlier, we were joking about maybe a mask, but maybe he does have a mask to hide this. And so he's still, uh, he's got all that charm, but mm -hmm. he doesn't have his, his main weapon anymore, which yeah, is his since, look. I was thinking since, I don't know. Um, I can't remember. I feel like I read somewhere in the book about intelligence doesn't necessarily mean like book smart like you can mm -hmm. like if he's got an 80 in, in in like street smarts or whatever you know that's where his intelligence lies is so you know he's kind of can be crafty that way but i don't know if, that, if that's stepping on the toes of another stat that would be relied on instead you know what i mean no i don't think so yeah you could really the the system is is made for you to break it for lack of a better okay. word you know so i i think that it's only going to make it much more interesting um I love this, and where? Uh, so it sounds like we know where everyone else is based, unless this uh, British guy is not in England right now. Um, yeah, I think I think I think he might be one of these guys that's like, one week he's um, like traipsing through the Raj, one week he's in Nepal, one week he's like uh, in in Australia, like uh, just taking the he has the he has the resources and the and he's running from himself. Yeah. No. Oh man, you're not gonna last long. <laughs> you know, no way. <laughs> you're gonna just role play breaks even when you pass sanity check. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I was like, I was describing almost like this sort of martinet. It's, I think it's a little more sensitive. He's a he's a he's a sweet boy. I think the uh, I think uh, he and Kate's character get along just fine. Uh, I love this. So we've got this con man, a student, an artist and a dilettante. Uh, and so you said, Rob, there is a con man occupation. It's in the investigator's handbook. There is, is that... yeah, it's under criminal. Okay, great. So now all of you have chosen your occupations. Fucking brilliant. And you see that each occupation, I think all of these say Lovecrafty, and I don't think anybody says modern. Obviously, no one's a hacker. Um, but if anything <laughs> says modern, just ignore those skills. But for example, dilettante. Uh, your skills, uh, I'm now explain what this means, is uh, art, craft, any. So you can choose, like, if you put decide to put points of that, art, craft, uh, origami, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Firearms, other languages, ride, one interpersonal skill, like charm, fast talk, intimidate, persuade. Like, Rob, you, you sound like someone would be like charm and fast talk. Yeah. And then any three other skills. And so what that means is, out of those skills, you can allocate what your occupation skill points are to any of those. So for a dilettante, it's your education. T <laughs> it's funny. Where do they come up with this? Education <laughs> times two okay. plus appearance times two. So what number is that? Great. Education times two uh, is 130 plus 
appearance times two. So it's 250 altogether. 250. So you have 250 points that you can allocate in any way you want between those skills that are listed in your occupation. Okay. You're going to have a chance for personal skills that you can use to either bolster your these skills now if you want to min-max or spread around other skills that don't fall into this wheelhouse. Um, but even uh, the dilettante, unlike other occupations, uh, you can choose those skills or any three other skills because a dilettante has different focuses. Maybe your focus was archaeology. And mm -hmm. so you can use that if you wanted to, but you've got, what'd you say, 250 points? That's right. To put into that. Now, one thing I have to look up real quickly, and you'll see each of you have, depending on your thing, student, what is student's uh, occupation skill points? Uh, it's education times four, so for me it's going to be 280 points oh. to allocate. Jeepers, okay. Um... And Under so, skills, it did say one of them says language, own, or other, and I do want my character to be Arabic, so I think I want to have Arabic language as one of those skills. Yep, don't sleep on languages. I think that was something else I said to you. Uh, all of you need to be at least fluent in English, uh, mm -hmm. but having access to other languages is only going to help you in this campaign. However... You're always going to have access to guides and uh, people that can, translators that can help you along the way. Uh, wow, will it be great, though, if you just happen to be in an Arabic setting and not have to rely on the help of someone who you don't know if you can trust. Yeah. Um, all right, so the one thing I need to check, so each of you c c uh, calculate what your occupation skill points are is credit rating. Credit rating for each of you. So Dilaton is 50 to 99. What that means is you need to allocate a certain amount of points to get your credit rating between 50 and 99. And your credit rating is basically to determine how much money you have. Because right. this game doesn't work like other games. Like, you found four gold pieces. I can buy a dagger. No, it's like, what is your... What is your base credit rating? I want to be able to do that. I'll be like, all right, give me a credit credit rating check. Uh, you know what? I don't think you can afford that. So it, it's much more loosey goosey. So you're not doing a bunch of bookkeeping about like, I want to buy this thing. Ah, I don't have enough money. Well, what's your credit rating? What are you? Oh no, you're fine. You can buy it. The fact, mm -hmm. by the way, that they used credit rating as a phrase in this book, like I got flop sweats the first time. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I, oh God, no, 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 please don't ask me. And then I was like, oh, okay. Please, like, please. My credit score now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's BS, man. They don't do this in other games. I want mean, to make it that real life. You gotta give me a credit score. Yeah, you gotta roll for how many credit cards you can keep open to increase your credit score. Yeah. Somehow makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I, I, I'm pretty sure I could be wrong. You you need to use this pool mm -hmm. to bring your credit rating in that so, range. So of the of the points um, that you gather via the occupation skill points, you must allocate. In my case, between. 50 and 99 of those towards the credit rate. Right. And you'll have personal skill points as well that we'll get to in a second that you can also allocate. Um, but I don't, I, I'm pretty sure uh, that you have to use your occupational skill points to get your credit rating within that range. So how many points did you say you get? 250? 250, yeah. You've got to put at least 50, at least 50. into credit rating. Um, so it's a little limiting in that sense, but... Uh, you know, for a student, what's the student credit rating range? Oh, low. It's right. five to ten. <laughs> right. So you've got you've got two eighty, and you only have to put five. If you yeah. want to, you can put more, but you can't put more than ten. That's the one drawback. You have to stay within that range um, at character creation. So mm -hmm. calculate those numbers and start dropping those skill points in. Um, and then we don't have to go through everything. Oh, what'd you, what'd you do? But I, but I will want like sort of the, the highs and lows of what people have thrown their points into. What's nice about the occupational skill points is you're limited. You know, you, you're by your occupation. You only get so many things. Where but is, I do, uh, where is credit know. rating on the sheet? Yeah, that I Under art find. craft. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh. Alphabetical. There it is. Got Thank it. you. Okay. One thing to keep in mind, you'll see a skill called Cthulhu Mythos. I'm pretty sure no one has that as an occupational skill. Uh, uh, if you do, let me know. Uh, where is that? Under which? Uh, it's a skill under... La, 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 la. It's under Art Craft. 
Oh. You'll see Cthulhu Mythos. Um, oh, I got a zero. No. Yeah. So, oh, this uh, one other thing. Every skill has a base score. So, for example, climb. And I'm looking at Rob. Uh, I think accounting, it probably says one or something like that, right? Uh, accounting, I have a five for some reason. Okay, is that the base? Maybe that's the base. Anyways, all of these scores have bases, and mm -hmm. you add to that base. So if you decide, like, I want to put 10 points into accounting, then your accounting would be a 15, not a 10, because you've got a base score. Okay. Uh, so yeah, accounting always starts at 5%. Okay. So whenever you allocate points, you're allocating to whatever's there. So library use, always 20%. Very useful skill. Uh, spot when you hidden, allocate points, you're adding to that score. Adding to that score, yeah. Right. Um, but the one thing I was going to say is about Cthulhu Mythos, you cannot add points to Cthulhu Mythos. The Cthulhu Mythos skill yeah. is unlocked throughout play as you are confronted by the horrors of the Cthulhu Mythos. And what happens is as your skill goes up in Cthulhu Mythos, your sanity goes down by the same exact amount as you start to like understand what else exists beyond what you see. Um, so take a moment and, and kind of divvy around. Let me know if you have some stuff to talk about. Um, and I'm just gonna chat a little bit about what happens after this, but you don't have to listen to me. So the the skills that are listed under our specific occupation, um, those are skill like is it like D and D where it's like I'm proficient in that, or that's the only things I can add points to? It's it's the latter. Yeah, it's what it, I can add it, points to. It's okay. what you can add points to. But I think like like Ross, some of you will have things that like says and any other X amount of skills, and then you can just choose. So the dilettante can choose like three other skills that aren't listed there to allocate those points. Does the con man have that or no? Um, no, it's I can choose between two interpersonal skills, and they list like four of them in terms of okay. in terms of options. Um, yeah, when you, we get to the personal skills point, you can put those anywhere you want. But yeah, you're limited by uh, you have to put those points into credit rating to get it within that range, and mm -hmm. then whatever else you want. And you could honestly put all of them into charm if you wanted to. Uh, well, you couldn't have you have to keep it below ninety. Nothing can go above ninety. Okay. And so if mine says, uh, so for skills, mine says language, owner, other, library use, listen, three fields of study, and any two other skills as personal or, or era specialties. So because I said cryptology, could I add that as one of my skills absolutely. and allocate points to it? Okay. Oh, yeah. And you absolutely should. I mean, because that's going to come in handy. And it's the type of thing, like, can I use my cryptology here? And nine times out of ten, I'm going to be like, yep. So, languages. Yes. It says you're proficient in your own language. For me, I'm assuming that's German. Yes. So we need to be also be fluent in English, so that means I need to add English and put 50 in it. <sighs> that seems lame, right? I feel like you just know English. But, I mean, I did make a character that I don't... You did make a German, yeah. But, man, that just seems like I'm burning you to 50 points. I feel like... Everybody in Germany knows English, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like English I, is half German anyway. Right. I added it, um, and I'm going to see how everything works out. And if okay. I feel like I really want to add something else, and it'll really be great. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm happy with you playing it the way you want to play. If you're like, you know, I, I want to put that that in there, you can. Or if you want to just be like, you know what, I just I know English, that's cool too. Um, yeah, the credit rating is the real sticking point. Like, you know, the student obviously lucks out. You only need that nine, but you're limited because you can't, or excuse me, five to 10. You can't be higher than 10. So when mm -hmm. it's time to eat, you, nobody can hand you the bill. Um, nope. <laughs> now your credit rating can improve and it will improve as the game goes on. Um, but yeah, you're going we'll to need to ar have to arm wrestle people. And, and make bets to, to pay my pay my bills. <laughs> mm, that's right. Be a a, a <laughs> pool shark <laughs> on the weekends. Uh, all right. Anything? Any any highlights? Uh, They're jumping out. And also, don't be like, don't feel like super pressured to have to nail this all down now. Between sessions, between now yeah, and the first I'll, session, I'll you can play around. Okay. I'm definitely going to up that occult because I've got like a base of five. I, I'm definitely going to up the occult one, add some points in cryptology, add some points in Arabic. 
have the credit rating and then just kind of see what else makes sense to distribute some extra points and some other things. Yeah. Yeah. I think this 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 character bump poured a lot of it into that credit rating. So that's how he's <laughs> making his way through the world. And and I and I, and I put a lot of it into into the language of Latin, which I feel like often goes, <laughs> any any anyone who spent this much time in a in a in the British school system has probably soaked up quite a bit. Hmm. Um, that's great. And I, I think I had emailed you guys. I, I had mentioned some, uh, this is straight out of the book here, some skills that are good to keep in mind. Um, what were they? I think they were like archaeology and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that. And when um, we do... Uh, archaeology, disguise, first aid, history, on and on and on. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So, you, but you have that list. There's just some skills that, like, if they fall into your occupation, maybe place pay special attention to it or not. Um, but when you get to your personal skills, those might be things you want to cover. Also, don't be worried that like Nora's character is going to be the occult person. You'll be like, well, we're playing Cthulhu, and I don't know anything about occult. That's fine. Like everyone's going to have their what they do well, and then what they stretch themselves to do. Um. Troy, when, when we do checks, and I don't want to get, like, too behind the curtain or whatever, um, but, like, I've got sleight of hand. Mm-hmm. Is that a check that's based off of whatever my sleight of hand number is, or does that go off of dexterity, or is it some combo? No, it's sleight two? of hand. So whatever okay. your sleight of hand is, that would that would be what you roll. Got it. And sometimes I'll be like, oh, I just need a, a regular success. Sometimes it has to be, it's based on the spot hidden of the person you're trying to hide something from. So if I have a character and I have their stats here and I know their spot hidden, uh, which is basically like perception in mm-hmm. this, is a 90, that means you're going to need an extreme success on your sleight of hand to try and get it by them. Got it. Um, but if they have a spot hidden of 20, they just need a regular success. Um, all right. Any other any other highlights you want to talk about now? And again, don't feel like you have to nail it down now. But if you have some stuff, you're like, I definitely know I want to do this. That might be interesting. So I'm not committing to points for everything yet, but for artists, I get art, craft, any. So I'm going to do fine art. Okay. And then I get history or natural world, which I have to look into a bit. Um, so I'm not sure what that one. And then for my interpersonal skill, I chose persuade because I feel like, you know, in the art house, they're just like debating each other all the time and then maybe making out afterwards. Um, <laughs> other language, I have two languages so far. And then I also uh, get to put s- skills in psychology and spot hidden. Two other skills as personal or era specialties, which era specialties. Can you elaborate? What is it called? Era special. It says any oh, two other era skills. Era specialties. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I never heard of that one. Era right. specialties. I think they, they all seem to say that. And I, or, and I think it's like, Anything that makes sense era wise for the character you're describing? Is it is it that loose or is there a definitive it, it well, says in, in the book skills that were particularly useful and ubiquitous in a given era. So you're so going to Charleston. This, yeah. <laughs> On the character <laughs> sheet, there is spaces sitting. for you to name and price your own skills, and I feel like that's what that means. If there's something really you want that's not represented here, I think you can do that. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting. So, yeah, you should feel free if you, like, start reading about the Roaring Twenties and you're like, this was a big thing. You could have a specialty in that. I mean, I am the the worst person to ask because I don't know anything. Like, flapper dresses? <laughs> Stitching flapper dresses. Uh, have they even called flapper dresses? But, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you don't feel like you have to do that. Psychology spot hidden, huge in this campaign. Um, but if there's something that strikes your fancy, feel free to throw it in that. Um, like that's a trap door so you can add skills that you just want for to make this character make sense. <laughs> um, yeah. Got Latin, got the... Put in some fast talk. And if this guy's a veteran, he's got some rifle skills also. Oh, yeah. And this is now we'll get to personal skills. So just remember, keep track of how many points you have and how many you can allocate, keeping in mind that some of these started at a base value, uh, like accounting started at a five. But just remember how many more you need to allocate. And then we'll just talk a little briefly about 
personal skills. You get a certain amount of personal skill points equal to your intelligence times two. And you can put those anywhere you like. So you could buff up things that are your occupational skills and you should, you know, you want to be really good at mm -hmm. the things that are associated with your occupation. But you also be like, well, shit, firearms isn't in my occupation, but I want to be able to know how to, I want to have a chance to fire a gun. Um, and so that's key is like, don't forget things like firearms, fighting, brawl, your unarmed combat is equal to your brawl. Um, but don't worry if that, that's not your jam. Maybe this artist doesn't know how to fight or fire a gun. That's gonna be interesting story. Um, and maybe you have to learn and you'll slowly gain points in that. Don't, I don't want you to feel like this is a role-playing game. I need to know how to use weapons. You don't, that's what the beauty of Call of Cthulhu. Um, because someone here is gonna be really good at it. What was that intelligence times two thing you said? Intelligence times two, whatever that number is, that's the number of personal skill points you can put anywhere you want. On top of the other number? On top of the occupation, yeah. But you're and now with, you can add them to the other skills as well. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, you're not, you're not limited by your occupation skills. So this is what really rounds out you as a person. Um, right. And from a metagame perspective, it also makes sure that you cover your bases. You don't yeah. want to have a, a zero spot hidden or whatever the the, the low yeah. is that's that's going to be important but you, you're going to have to make some decisions uh because if you really want to have something else maxed out it's up to you if you want to min max or be more well-rounded hey ross yes sir how where are you at with fast talk i bumped it up let me see what i got here um how fast does this guy are you micro machines <laughs> guy or are you? I'm not micro I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, am I that, that guy? Um, no, I'm I'm at 55. Okay, so I'm gonna because I I had gotten up to 45 with that. I'm gonna switch over to uh, persuade right, instead because that's a different social skill that I can take. So we can kind of keep it. Great. That's cool. Balanced. Now I can't remember what the base fast talk was. Uh, it it, it says it on the the like example sheet that yeah, you have. Time stone. Um, Base fast talk is 5%. Okay, great. Like I point. think it's like the, if you have the Keeper Handbook, it's like the last page of the Keeper Handbook gives you a sample sheet. Oh, okay, great. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll also go through these and, all, and check them and make sure the numbers are right. Also, it's not the end of the world if they're slightly off. I don't think we're going to have any gross uh, errors. Again, here, you can take some time between sessions if you want to divvy these all up. But some of you might already have, well, ah, I'm done. Either way, anything sort of want to highlight here? If you're like, oh, you know what? I, I think this is interesting. I decided to blah, blah, blah. Well, actually, hmm. I, have one, I just have one other question about the, uh, as the game goes on, I don't know. I didn't really see how it works with, is there XP or is it like a situation where these are going to be the stats that last? Or do we get to like add to them as we level up? Or they're constantly changing. So it's not like XP so much as what they call um, investigator development phases, okay. which happen uh, periodically throughout the adventure. So th there's going to be stuff that happens between each session with luck points, for example. But when you get to the end of certain scenarios or sidetrack scenarios, because there's stuff that happens in this adventure that you're just going to go off on a tangent and it has absolutely no connection to the main campaign whatsoever. Right. And it's just like a horrifying sidetrack scenario. This thing is loaded with them. We must but, find this uh, evil scone recipe. <laughs> <laughs> but the Try good thing to... is you develop your investigator when you do them. So there's okay. some benefit. And but I'm sure we I'll should be it. like keeping track of how successful we are on certain roles, because isn't that how every time you fail a role, you mark that that's what the little box is next to your skill. So anytime you roll a skill and fail it during a session, mark that box. And then at certain times, I don't know if it's between sessions or each investigator phase, you're gonna roll to improve that skill. Okay. Um, but am I wrong in that if you get, if you roll a, like on a hard, if you succeed on like a hard success for a certain number of rolls, isn't that like, it, do you get like some sort of ability improvement on that, or am I wrong? I'm not sure. It, yeah, it doesn't I, I ring a bell, but it might too, be true. It, it might be true. I'll know by the time we actually start. Um, <laughs> uh, but 
I, I, I do know that when you fail a roll, you mark it, okay. and then you get to, like, improve that. It shows that you're, like, learning through failure. Um, but that might be something. Uh, but the, the, short, the short answer to your question is, Rob, these numbers are going to change as you grow. Okay, because uh, I didn't then, know if I was supposed to be, like, you know, right now my max stat is, like, 50 or 55. I didn't know if it's like, I better get this thing to above a 50% chance of passing for the entire game or not right now. Yeah, no, you're, you're going to, this character will develop. It's, it's actually a very cool way of developing. Um, it just feels more organic. You don't all of a sudden wake up the next day superhuman. You just wake up a little better. But then sometimes you might open a treasure and find this headband that you put on, and all of a sudden your you're strength, attractive. you're attractive, right, or your it. strength okay, is great. now 120. Yeah. Yeah, no, you, you, will, you will change, and then you'll die uh, and build something <laughs> new. Can't wait. Great, I think uh, I... Did it? <laughs> What's looking good for personal uh, as you added those personal skill points in, or, uh, Ross? I built up his, trying to build up his sort of veteran, that the veteran slash dilettante thing. So throwing throwing stuff into into charm, fast talk, rifle, uh, just a little bit into ride, um, that that kind of thing. So like he he has some of these like kind that. of skills of soldier. My 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 take on this guy is he he didn't spend long at the front. He was injured real real soon after being there, and uh, though he has some some bulk, like there's like maybe a limp or a hitch in his giddy up from taking some taking some a mini ball or some shrapnel in the hip or something. I like it. Uh, it totally fits the character. Um, and it's wildly different than what everyone else has. Um, anybody else want to share anything that kind of jumped out at you as interesting? Uh, no, okay, so I'm looking at these, the, the different skills, and it says natural world mm-hmm. under one of them. Is that like the equivalent of, let's say, like a nature check or what is biology? It allows you to like identify species, plants. Okay. Uh, it, it's like... Uh, I read oh, into that one because I was going to choose that also and it's like a non-scientific way of identifying natural stuff. And huh. I thought that fit in with mine with like the whole like uh, the way that they paint street scenes. So maybe they're observant in that way. You, you're right. It, it, I, I, I'm looking, I'm on a the Cthulhu subreddit right now and I think it, the way it's explained in 7th edition which is what we're playing it originally was the study of plant and animal life but by the 19th century natural world had separated into a range of academic disciplines like it represents unscientific knowledge and personal observation of the world around you okay. so like watching a That's farmer yeah yeah, t- I mean, very, very useful skill. It's not something you all need to take, but having one or two people uh, have it, you know, when it gets down to brass tacks and I'm like, and you're trying to think of what can I possibly roll to contribute to the, I think the natural world is one of those ones that you can kind of finagle uh, the keeper and be like, could I do a natural world check because I observed <laughs> the way that fisherman threw the line in? And I'll be like, all right this natural world yeah for for your character kate that seems like a no-brainer i did all my basic ones but then the intelligence times two gives me another 140 points i'm a little overwhelmed <laughs> that's a lot of points <laughs> i definitely right? need to do this between sessions yeah, for yeah. my brain but i, I i'm kind of writing down where i feel like points need to go into same right. your christmas yeah. list and i definitely yeah. want to have one like a uh, wild card one that's like not on the sheet that's like 20s Knitting. themed <laughs> yeah <laughs> just <laughs> something i need it um crafts crochet radio, <laughs> points? radio <laughs> listening radio. Yeah. what's your the radio possession skill <laughs> pencil <laughs> cranking <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I totally don't want you to put in the spot. I want you to take that time. Um, this is as much for all of us as for the audience who hopefully see this and be like, "I need to play this game." Um, so let's just move on then, and and we'll talk about this between sessions. Damage bonus and build. I think uh, maybe only Nora 
would be borderline uh, having something different. But do the sheets calculate your damage bonus in your build? So damage bonus is like when you punch somebody in the face, if you're super strong or you have a, a certain size, you add your strength and your size, and there's a table that lets you know what your damage bonus is. If you mm. go under the combat, it's calculated for you. It is. Okay, great. Yeah. Does anybody have the bonus like... Is anybody above 125 when you add your strength and your size? Yeah, just barely. I'm at 130. The oh, damage great. Bonus, the damage bonus it has here yeah. is a 1d4. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I have 1d4 as well. Okay, so you both have a build of one then, right? Yeah. Okay, and then so Ross and Kate's character, you have a build of zero and no damage bonus. Yep. Yeah. Mine's okay. 125, do I not? Oh, 125. You're, you just made the cut. Just made it. Um, build of so you, one. <laughs> yep. So you got a build of one and 1d4. And build really comes into effect with combat maneuvers. If like somebody's trying to grapple you or in chases and chase mechanics are, they're a big part of Cthulhu. There's going to be a time when you're like running through the streets of some, it's very James Bondy. And so your build comes into effect based on the build of the person you're chasing or the person chasing you. Um, great. Again, shout out to roll 20 for these awesome character sheets. And now we're going to get to the end uh, here is where we start to flesh out who these people are inside uh, with their backstory and the gear, just like these things, you guys can do gear off air and the gear is very simple. You just, what, what do you want to have? And if you're like, uh, I'm not sure, can I, can I have a tank? Troy, I would say no, but for I the phone. most part, it's it's not like you roll. I have fifteen gold pieces. What can I buy? Just put on your sheet what you want and go to the back of the handbook, uh, and you'll see in like the appendices there's a list of all the equipment. You can have whatever you want. And honestly, I'm not gonna uh, rake you over the coals for this. If we're playing and you're like, I feel like my guy has a a handkerchief, a monographed handkerchief. If it fits the dilaton, I'm not gonna be like, well, you didn't write it on your sheet. Uh, <laughs> cool. Yeah. I have a power ring that makes me, uh, <laughs> gives me the powers of flight and invisibility. <laughs> I have a sports I almanac I from the future have one of that those. I can use to place bets now. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This guy's cornering the market. Oh my God, the stock market's crashing. <gasps> Are we living in Biff's Cthulhu world? Exactly. Yeah. This is why the depression happens in this universe. Masks of Biff. <laughs> Uh, let's go through the basics and then we'll go through the tables. Uh, we can save name. We'll save name for the end. That's always fun. We know what everyone's age is, or we know age range, so kind of settle on what you want that age to be. I know Rob's character is, uh, 39 and 11. Staring down the barrel of 40. (laughs) There it is. Oh, I remember that sweet summertime. Uh, we know what your occupations are. Current residents. I think we've established this, except for Rob. Where are you currently located? Well, I can. I figure, just you know, obviously uh, for you and I, Troy, and just the general thing. I think Massachusetts. I think kind of okay. old, old New Perfect. England money is where this wife comes from. You know, maybe like a Hamilton Wenham, Marblehead kind of vibe. <laughs> Marblehead, <laughs> Gloucester by the Sea. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, yeah, that's perfect. All right, now we have two of you in Massachusetts, and then. Uh, to uh, a German and a Brit. Okay, great. And if you want to put what your hometown is, if it's different from where you currently are, feel free. I don't find it terribly interesting unless you do. Um, Now we'll go through these backstory tables. These are really fun. You know, I think some people think like, ah, I'm a good role player. I don't need to use these. I'm just going to, I'm going to create the character myself. But what this does is it like, it just adds things that you may not think about as you create your backstories. And we can go through these pretty quickly, I think. Um, So the first one is ideology beliefs. Do you guys see these um, tables? Mm -hmm. Uh, I I wish I'd grabbed the investigator's handbook, but I'm using the keeper. So our pages are probably a little bit different. Uh, uh, It's under backstory, the backstory um, on the sheet, but I don't know where it is in the handbook. Okay, it's page 43 in the Keeper Handbook, but... Um, oh, rats, I didn't grab it. See, yeah. Raspberries. See. All raspberries. Oh, it's 50, snakes. page 50. It says 50 FF. I don't know what that means. 50 <laughs> FF. 50 and following, probably? Um, okay, yeah, it's on page 50 of the investigators. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, and if you're following at home in the Keeper Handbook, yes, it's page 43. So... Again, we can go through these quickly, but I think it's going to help flesh out 
who they are a little bit more. Ideolo ideology, beliefs, all of these you can either roll or just pick one. Or roll, and if you don't like it, pick one. Uh, I kind of like that method a little bit better because then it gets you in the game here. So everybody roll a d10 and see what you come up with and see if it kind of fits along with what you're thinking. The nice thing is if you're not, never thought about what their ideology is, this might give you some inspiration. <laughs> I, got, I got three. Science has all the answers. Pick a particular <laughs> aspect of interest. Evolution, cryogenics, space exploration. I'm That's gonna, you to a T. I'm going to choose probably yeah. the next one, which is like fate or something. Yeah. I mean, for Nora, what did you roll, Nora? I rolled a five. Member of a secret society, uh, member of a society or secret society. Okay, that's pretty interesting because I was looking at seven, the occult. But oh, now the occult. this, that but then again, also. this is also kind of cool too. Were you in some like weird society? Could be. We shall find out. I, I like the idea. I love it. Right. I, when I looked it. at this, I'm like, I'll just choose a cult. It would fuel occult. her 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 uh, quest for knowledge in the occult. Yeah, I think this could be really interesting. And, and where you're a student of Miskatonic, there's all these sort of little inner circles like this. Um, all right, so you, you you do what you want there. Rust, what, what did you roll? Did it do anything for you? I rolled a two, which is mankind can do fine without religions, uh, like a staunch atheist, humanist, or secularist. And um, I mean, is this is this character kind of swims into focus, probably raised like high church Anglican, but uh, uh, World War One has a way of making that more complicated. Yeah, so I, the, think, I think the horrors God died of war. for this guy in uh, in the trenches and um, perhaps now going around the around the world just in a way almost proving like like soaking up existence because this is this is all there. This is all there is. Uh, uh, the religions of the world are, are, are so much theater and foolishness. <laughs> oh my God, I love this. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, of course he was raised in the church and then his, uh, the horrors of war have changed everything for him. Uh, Rob, what did you roll? I got a seven, so it says the occult. Uh, nice. But maybe, maybe the only reason, it's maybe it's more of like a recent thing, given mm. what's going on with his, uh, beloved, in quotes. Uh, <laughs> it's just sort of like, why... Is this woman not dying? Something's going on. And so maybe he just starts studying. Because I feel like a con man would be very practical by, you know, their sort of fallback nature would be like, the world's tough. You got to con the world to get what you want. You know, that kind of a thing. But, yeah. So for him to get into the occult, I mean, it's his like tarot card potentially, but I feel like he's only kind of getting into it now. Or he's just looking into it. It's like, is there a way to vaporize my wife. <laughs> Is there a way yeah. and make it look like she spontaneously combusted or something? You know, I don't know. Yeah, what, and I'm throwing this out as, a, as an option. What if he maybe like stumbled upon a book in her library? Yes, like, that's great. What is this? Well, and you know what? That's what I was, because, you know, you had specified in the, in the, in the pre-show email, you know, as long as they have a reason to have gone on an expedition. I didn't know if that meant like in their past that he was like with her on some exploratory adventure where he had to like tag along and carry the suitcases and stuff but <laughs> but, but him um, coming across some of her stuff I think would be cool yeah that could be interesting and maybe that's what led him to be like I, I need to go do this for, for yeah. us yeah for uh, us baby baby yeah, cakes yeah. <laughs> his untold riches um, yeah. will be set for life, and it's really just an excuse to one get away from her and maybe find a monster to kill her yeah I already uh, rolled and I got a five, a member of a secret society, and I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm going to do that. Maybe, Ooh, a couple of maybe we're in the same one. Oh, is that what you got? Or an opposing one. And we see each other and we're like, You give each other the sign. I don't sign. know you yet. We, yeah, we do the secret handshake. She's in the yeah. German chapter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Alpha, beta, chi. Uh, are you that a Mason cool or a Scottish right Mason? <laughs> so that would be cool to like, tie us together in some way so we're not yeah. just like four random, completely oh, I like random it. people. I like it. Oh, yeah, same like, secret maybe, society. Maybe there was a, I, I like on the periphery like of Cambridge or whatever, I, I like I knew people who weren't too secretive about their, their relationship with the secret society. Hell, maybe I was an initiate. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I like this. I mean, secret societies are always fun. Can't go wrong with a secret society. Never. They uh, only help things. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Nixium. 
Uh, oh no! All right, let's talk about <laughs> which one of us is the vanguard of this organization. <laughs> Absolutely no volleyball oh in this game at six a.m. <laughs> Guys, Absolutely after we not. finish this character creation, why don't we just go play a little <laughs> one a.m. volleyball? No. No. It's just for some team building. Uh, let's talk about significant people in your life. Uh, this one you really... I think you can't go wrong with the role here because you can make it anything you want. Like, you might be like, no, I want to be married. You can still be married. But, like, who is someone and, and, and like, what is their story? So I had an idea for this going into my character's backstory. I wanted her to be, like, a second-generation Arab-American and her dad was a professor or still is a professor at Miskatonic. So mm. that's how she kind of got in to the world that she's in. And so her I dad like would this. be a significant person. So and it like, would be her dad. And then if you look on the following page, you, the, you can roll or determine why they're significant to you. And so is it because you're indebted to him in a way? I uh, would say he would I don't know if this is in here. Did he financially oh, here protect you through, uh, like, get you through there? Like, I know this is going to be tough. I want to say that number two, like, he taught me something. And he's kind of the one that's getting me into the occult studies and bringing me into a world that is hidden. I like it. Yeah, maybe he saw something and he's not overtly telling you what it is, but he kind of wants to help guide you to find it on your own. Yes, yes, I love it. Here's a pamphlet for this volleyball-loving secret <laughs> society. <laughs> Don't call me dad anymore. Call me... Call me Van well, We'll talk about it later. Here's oh, a gold no. sash. Here's a go <laughs> Daughter, here you've, <laughs> you've earned this. Uh, oh no! Did anybody else roll something or have it, or come with an idea of who they're significant, like a child or something? I rolled and I got the who is a person who taught me my highest occupational skill, so probably my fine art skill. Your um, mentor. I still have to figure all that out. It's probably going to be my art skill, um, and I have a feeling of regret towards them. Oh, oh what's that all about? <sighs> I don't know. I mean. Let's see, feeling of regret. Maybe I like stopped listening to their advice, maybe. Spurned their sexual advances. Maybe. Maybe they, <laughs> you thought that they were just this mentor, but they fell in love with you and you were like, I don't like you like that. And you feel bad, I don't know, that could be regret. That mentor sort of teacher, uh, student relationship could be very complicated, as complicated as you want to make it. Hmm. Regret is interesting, though. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, God, this is, this is, I just want to build characters. Uh, Ross, what did you, anything jump, do you choose or roll? Um, I, I think, I don't know if this is too dark, but like, I, I feel no like, such I, thing. I feel like, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, this character was really, not into the idea of of uh, going to war, but um, a companion of theirs at university like enlisted, and it was like, well, can't go, can't can't have them go alone, and uh, so th and it's not so much that he has a, a someone in his life now, but the, the specter of this of this uh, person who passed away in the war, and he's got some. So maybe the the significant person is this uh, companion who he has some survivor's guilt. Okay. We went to war with. I like that. And they're based in England as well. Yes. Classmate. Classmate. And uh, do you think they're suffering in the same way that you are? I mean, I, I think that they may have passed away. Oh, um, okay. I don't know if that, that skirts it, but... Uh, no, as long as there's still that connection there, I think They're very okay. much a presence um, in the life of, of this character, I think. Okay. Either, be sure between sessions to name these yeah. people as well and put those on the sheet because like, oh my God, I can mine the hell out of that mm -hmm. Ross and we're, we're, we're gonna see this character at some point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so knowing knowing more about them, knowing their name and what they meant to you is gonna be important. Mm -hmm. Rob, what about you? I mean, it's perfect. I rolled partner, spouse, 
fiance lover, so that's oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, what is your? Uh, why are they significant? Because you're. Uh, you wronged them as a shared experience. You idolize them. <laughs> Maybe a feeling of regret. You're indebted to them. Yeah, basically indebted <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yeah, indebted. Perfect. Yeah. Chained to. Chained to. <laughs> yeah, and again, these are just suggestions. You can adapt them and change them anything you want. They're jumping off points for whatever you want to make it. What's great, um, too, is all the, the list of period names is all old lady names. <laughs> <laughs> There's Agatha, Agnes, Ethel, Perfect. Bernice. Perfect. <laughs> Let's talk about meaningful locations. Uh, these are cool too. And you know, not only do these help you kind of round out the character, they help me as the keeper kind of build, uh, connect you to this story because I want to use what you come up with and really infuse the, the pre-written adventure with it. So um, this isn't just an exercise. Uh, go ahead and roll or choose for meaningful locations. Nora, what'd you get? Uh, let's see here. I'm rolling it now. Roll a seven. The grave of a significant person. Ooh. Huh. Interesting. Huh. You talked about your relationship with your father. Yeah, let's let's uh, let's your, say it's mom. That's what I was thinking, yeah. Yep. Wow. Okay. Yep, and then would extreme. We'll say she she died in mysterious circumstances. She sure did. Was dad involved? I don't know. Was dad we'll trying to out. save her? <gasps> Not Vanguard. No. Uh, <laughs> it was a volleyball accident. <laughs> it was a, a horrible volleyball accident. <laughs> she suffocated in the net. Um Okay, what'd you what'd you get? <laughs> I rolled family home. So stupid. Family home. <laughs> yeah. Your German hamlet. My German family home out in the country. Oh, mm -hmm. was it made of candy? It was made of fruit. <laughs> uh, why do you think your family home was so significant? We've talked about your background with your artists, this complicated relationship with your teacher. Uh, do you have a strong relationship with your family, do you think? I think I blow up all the relationships in my life. I think with my teacher, like, I just said something awful in that mm -hmm. fallout that we had that I just regret to push them away. I think that my meaningful location is my family home, but it's not somewhere that I'm always comfortable going back to because I don't get along with my family if they're still around. I haven't decided that yet. Yeah. Um, but I push everyone away for who knows what reason why yet. Yes. Maybe you find that tension inspires you as an artist like you force oh. people out just to create chaos that you can <laughs> uh, then do art art in I like that um, I like that family home and then it gives you so much room why why is the family home important um, Rob would you would you go with I was gonna <laughs> this is fucked up I was gonna go with the grave of a significant person that's like the plot that we have <laughs> by, the house, already. by the mansion that I was like staring at constantly because yeah. the two headstones like already already chiseled their names next to each other. now, my dear. I'm just like staring into the middle distance and like constantly staring. Yeah, but you're working um, on the. Are you working on our crypt again? Yes. <laughs> I'm just digging it preemptively, my love. <laughs> um, but that's messed up. Uh, Rub my ankles. It could be. Yes, darling. Here's, here's your creams. Um, it could be, uh, or it could just be like, there's like a place for socializing. So it could just be like his escape. It's just sort of like, I just got to get out of here. I'm just gonna, I got to go to the gentleman's club, my love. Just, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then maybe there's there. some unsavory character or mysterious figure there that draws you into this as well. It could also be that that I'm in, in a massive amount of debt. Um, maybe that. that's how you got kicked in the face by a by a horse, <sighs> quote unquote. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> which, when I wrong. first went into debt, I was like, I got this, no problem. This, this, this lady's going to kick the bucket no time. And then it's just like, she's still <laughs> alive. And 20 I'm years later. Interest of into Big Jimmy or whatever his name is. I don't know. Oh, yeah, you might have, you know, uh, loan sharks that are looking for their money and you thought yeah. this would be an easy payday for you. And Too much betting on the ponies. Yeah, okay, I like this. And, uh, Ross, did I ask you your meaningful no, location? I rolled a family home, which I like, because I think, yeah, this this this, this uh, fellow comes from means. I think he has, like, a, like just an idyllic... Um, 
um, country house in in England that his that his family's from. Let's uh, uh, <laughs> eight, eight Eagles Grange. It's called <laughs> Eagles Grange is the name of the estate. Mm-hmm. Uh, Agil because it's a uh, it's dates dates back to the um, uh, dates back to to Norman uh, or to pre Norman times. So these are the these are, these are like an old the land was an old like um, um, pre conquest farm farming estate. There's some old standing stones on the property. You should come and see them. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, this uh, again, this makes sense. And I like that there's some overlap here. A couple of family homes. Uh, a couple of people that uh, have graves that they visit. Um, Ooh, maybe there's a symbol that mysteriously appeared on my mother's gravestone, and I'm trying to decipher what that means. Whoa. Mm. It's always been there, and you never knew, and your dad won't tell you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. And yes. Uh, only a couple more here, and 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 then we're we're done. There's just treasured possessions, and then traits, and then we get to your and we finish with your key background connection, which is a really interesting mechanic. Uh, so, talk to me about treasured possessions. You can either roll or choose or make up something that's not on the list. Um, if you're like, no, my guy always has his, his lucky rabbit's foot. Hmm. I rolled a two, which is an essential item from my occupation. Which, like painter, would it be like my paintbrush? I don't brush. know. That's kind of that's kind of silly. Your favorite brush? Your easel? Your, your paint? Your favorite color? Yeah, I don't know. Like, is it supposed to be something that we carry with us all the time, or can it be like? A, a painting that someone made me. I feel like it, it. In order to make it interesting, it's have to. It's something that if like you lost, it would be a big deal, and so it's tough. Like with paintbrush, maybe it is a brush that like you just it 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 paints exactly the way you want, and any other brush you try can't do what that one does. Um, but feel free to pick something else. You know. Well, can it be something that I can't carry on me? Can yeah, it be for like sure. a big painting? So that's what I'm thinking. Like maybe someone I used to be close with. I don't know. I fought with everyone painted me something amazing and it means something to me because I did like them but I pushed them away and I have their painting. You have that and it's in your 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 home um, and if anything happened to it that would be bad to you. Yeah, no, I think that's great. Um, what about you, Nora? My mother's journal. Oh, yes. What secrets does that journal mm. hold? What do those last few entries say? Your father... <laughs> Said he's going to kill me. I mean, there's clearly there's clearly has to be pages that are torn from it. Of course, the last few pages, yeah, yeah. written in blood, and that same symbol appears on. Someone's the, knocking on the. On the... <laughs> <laughs> took the why time do to write the dash. Why does he make me play volleyball at one in the morning? <laughs> Your father insists on working on his serve. One forty-five a.m. Set up. A great side out. Uh, <laughs> his knee pads on again. <laughs> <laughs> I swear that man's going to kill me. Uh, all right, my that mother's spike. journal. I'm never good at the spike. <laughs> it's interesting. Maybe I, I said it jokingly, but maybe that same symbol that you saw in the grave is you find that buried mm. within a page of the journal. Yeah. What was this? Was your mom part of this society as well? Was she you a necessary know. sacrifice? Well, I don't know. Maybe she just died of natural causes. Who knows? Uh, Ross, what'd we you get? find out. I think uh, it's a memento of my of my deceased friend. I think uh, he was he ha- he had an artistic temperament, and I have like a poem that he that he dedicated to me, folded up and always close at hand. Oh, I like that. He'll fold or yeah, it's good. Always so, close to your heart. Just that poem. worn, worn and increased, but always close at hand. From time to time, you pull it out and give it another read. I like that, uh, Rob. Uh, mine's a, a, a locket. And when you open it up, uh, on one side is a, is a picture of a photograph of me before the accident, and then on the other side is another picture of me before the accident. <laughs> <laughs> just so handsome. I love just, it. I just, and if I lost that, oh, it's the only it's the only two photos of me I have. It's the only memory, yeah. 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 Before yeah. And still before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God damn, I'm a good-looking man. Want to see the Maybe. fan art on Twitter? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
I don't. Again, I'm just gonna throw out ideas. You take what you want. No, you please. throw the rest out. But maybe this is also part of this occult thing. It's like, is there a way to get those looks back? Can I get my face back? Ooh. <gasps> mm, I would do anything to get those looks back. Oh, that'd be uh, sweet. Yeah. Oh man. Oh boy, this is gonna be. Uh, let's talk about traits. This is the last one before key background connection. Uh, you know, again, just a little added layer to this character. Is someone is someone gonna roll hedonistic? That is very interesting. Um, is someone a gambler, a ladies' man, or seductress? Um, what did you get, Kate? I rolled nine at first, which is a good reputation. The best like, after dinner speaker in the country. Right? Which is not resonating with me, especially yeah. since I'm sitting here being like, I destroy all my relationships. Um, and then I rolled again and I got 10 ambitious. Mm. That's what I got. Um, what about Dreamer? Dreamer. Yeah. Dreamer plays two type, which if that's what you can do that or you can do something else. But uh, I think Dreamer is also very open as well. Maybe there are things happening in your dreams that you wake up and you paint what you see. I might be dreamer or I might just be something random like good cook. Yeah. <laughs> good cook is fun too. There's going to be times on the road. Call of or game. seductress or ladies man. I haven't decided who this is yet. Could be cool because I just get all these people throwing themselves at me. and Right. What is your appearance? 50. 50. But I figured oh, they you're, like you're are amazing. trendy. <laughs> so maybe that's like smoke and mirrors a little bit. You get closer to them and you're like, oh, you're not actually that hot. You just have a nice haircut. <laughs> yeah, thank God the charismatic. lighting was so poor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that Seinfeld episode where she looks good in one light. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ross, what did you roll? I, I rolled a loyal, which um, I think I think that I think that's true. Yeah. But I think uh, the one I'm more drawn to is like, I think this this uh, this this um, lapsed, lapsed Anglican veteran, like kind of like w w uh, dissipated, bright young thing, is like a little. Uh, I think he's a little bit of a little bit of a drunk. Hmm. Okay. I also yeah. feel like lapsed Anglican is just Anglican. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, just, I go through the paces, I yeah. sing, oh, okay. I sing some here. dirge like hymns yes. and rinse repeat. <laughs> yeah, okay, so maybe a little bit of a drunkard. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's going to be interesting too because when those sanity breaks inevitably happen, maybe you end up turning to the bottle and it gets out of control the more you f spiral. I think that also helps to explain his like limited dexterity and constitution. Shaky hands. A little bit. Um, and a bad liver. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then Nora. Uh, I rolled 10, ambitious. Maybe she is uh, in her quest for occult knowledge just because she is power hungry in some way. Mm. Yes. Yeah, once you see what the possibilities are and whatever the secret society is, you realize that you could have it all. You could have a credit rating above five. <laughs> One of these days. <laughs> um, I feel like she wears glasses. Does she wear glasses? We'll find out. Um, I'm just picturing this Miskatonic student now. Uh, <laughs> I need to cosplay. What does a keeper dress like? Just <laughs> robes. Just take robes. robes. Maybe get some uh, squid and just put it on your face. <laughs> yeah. Squid and a robe. That's the keeper, yes. It works. <laughs> Welcome to Time for Chaos. Uh, Rob, what did you roll for trait? I rolled Dreamer, which felt a little off, but then I saw Gambler, uh, which feels like That's how you got in trouble in the first what place. What got him in trouble to begin with, yeah. Yeah. Did you ever watch that show on HBO, Luck? It, it only no. ran for a season because it was all about horse racing. Dustin was Hoffman Dustin was Hoffman in, in that? Yeah. yeah, it was fucking great, but like 20 horses died during the filming and they were like, we, we have but to shut down this it. show. But it was so good. And there was this one character who was just, he was a degenerate gambler, uh, but he was also like a, a ladies man and a bit of a con man too. And they, I can't remember who the actor was, phenomenal. Huh. Um, and he just had a sixth sense for what horse would win. And he kind of reminds me of this, this oh, character. Nice. Which um, horse would die? 
which horse would win and which horse would die. Uh, key background connection, and then we finish with the name of your character, which I will put you on the spot for. Your key background connection is you take one of these traits that we just uh, rolled for or chose, and you choose what is the one that is like you, the most important to you. It could be a person. It could be your father. It could also be your family home. It could be that it's that thing that you that means more to you than anything. And the way it works mechanically is all of this stuff that you create background wise is fodder for me to destroy <laughs> or more <laughs> and twist as this story goes along. But the thing you choose is your key connection. I can't do that without at least giving you a chance to roll. Um, so it's just this small little mechanical thing. If all of a sudden I decide, if you choose your father and I decide because of something you get rolled up in, your dad is now a target. I can't just be like, and he was torn apart. You've walked it without giving you the chance to save him. Ooh. So it could be a person, place, or thing that we just went through. What do you think is your key connection? And then just mark it with a star or an asterisk uh, if the sheet doesn't have the functionality for it. Hmm. Tough call. I know mine. What's the most important thing to you, Kate? So I'm going to make it my treasured possession, which is the painting someone made me, and I thought about it. And this also goes back to the trait that I rolled of good reputation. I'm keeping that. And here's why. The painting that someone made me was painted by my significant person. And it's a portrait of myself. They painted me as they see me. And to me, it's like, it's so beautiful. I wish I could be this person that like they see in me. But unfortunately, like I'm not. Um, and then I have my, my trait, like a good reputation. Like I had a good reputation. It might slowly be going down. But that's what attracts these like maybe amazing people to me that I end up just like kind of throwing away. Um, but yeah, so my, my, what's it? He item. possession, yeah. Key possession oh, is key connection. that painting that's like keeping me tethered to being like, maybe I can be this good person, this amazing person. I love maybe. it. Oh, I, I love that, Kate. That's, that's great. That's really great. I'm my, my wheels are just spinning now and like how I can destroy it. How you can make me not that person. <laughs> I can, like, how can I Love use this it. against you? Uh, Ross, what about you? Um, I'll, I'll connect it to that poem again. And I think uh, from the hand of my, my friend, and let's say his name was Oberon Doyle. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Wow. Now I got to know what your character name is in a second. How are you going to beat Oberon Doyle? <laughs> and, uh, and, he, and, and it's in a small, like written, written in the trench, in like a crabbed, small hand but is like and talking about how like there's all this ugliness around us but we we can travel and even if we can't travel in our right now we can travel in our minds to places unseen places in dreams far carcosa distant uh distant places unseen by by others and and, and in a way my wanderlust is inspired by this that to like that I'm I'm experiencing the life that Oberon didn't get to have yeah Ah, oh, it's brilliant. Brilliant. Oberon Doyle. Okay. Uh, Rob, what about you? Key connection. I mean, I'm, I think I'm also going to go with the the locket possession thing just because I feel like in describing that and coming up with that, it just feels like it's he's just a really selfish guy. He's just really self-absorbed. Um, and I think that thing is sort of like physical evidence of that. And uh, that, I think, is his closest... Uh, I mean, the reminder of what his life was like before he made this terrible decision. Yeah, this, I feel like there's like a Dorian Gray thing going yeah. on mm. too with this. Okay, great. Um, it's funny, I thought everyone would choose people and we haven't had a, a, a person yet. Uh, Nora, what about you? Uh, mine is also my treasured possession. Uh, the, my character's mother's journal, uh, I will say she kind of knew what was coming and left clues in her entries and I just have to find out what happened to her and why yeah oh it's my god great I don't even know if we should play this I think we should just write an adventure based on <laughs> these amazing things you guys have come up with this is great this is really really good and oddly uh, already kind of connected to what 
story we're about to jump in. Um, I mean, I already see the connections right there. It's as if you've already read it. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's wrap up this session with the, you know, the name of the character. This is this is really, uh, you know, what they look like is going to be important. We're going to have uh, character portraits drawn for all of these by the time we do the first session. Oh, nice. uh, so we'll get to see them, and you'll, you know, I'll, I'll email you. You can send me some input on what their physical characteristics are. Um, like, does your guy Rob? Does he have like a mask? I think uh, he has to. I'm going to do yeah. some real disturbing research. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And the, all I think of is that guy on Boardwalk Empire. I know, that's what all I can think of too. Maybe that's what yeah, it ends up being. Yeah, I saw this documentary recently about someone that makes like prosthetics that are real to uh, true to life. Anyways, that so that should be really interesting. So, so I'll, I'll send you an email. You give me the description. But yeah, yeah. I'm gonna put you on the spot. What are the names of these investigators? Nora, you look ready. I was actually ready. Usually I'm a person that names their character at the very last. This time I named her at the very beginning. Uh, mm. Her name is Feyruz Gibran. Feyruz Gibran. Um, great. Can you spell that for me? Because we'll put it on your... Uh, or you yes, already did. I did. F-A-I-R-U-Z-G-I-B-R-N. Uh, B R A N. Now, I, I don't want to make any assumptions. Is uh, obviously a, a woman? Yes. Okay, and is everyone playing? She, her. She, her. Okay, uh, Rob, is you are? Is everyone playing? What is everyone playing? Uh, in terms of like, are you playing? A, if you're a man, are you playing a man? Are you playing yeah. a woman? Yeah. Okay. I could have yes. made that question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm so afraid I'm going to say the wrong. Just nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no. I don't you just tell me the answer. Two-year-old. Don't you just tell me the name? I'm, I'm going to be a. I'm going to be a lady. Okay. What's your lady's name? Um. Her full first name is, how do you pronounce this? I'm just like looking up German names and I really like this one. I think you pronounce it Margarita. It's spelled different than that, but- Margarita close. Hitler? Close <laughs> Oh my God. What is kind of name it's is that? Not, okay. <laughs> it's spelled like it looks like it says Marguerite, but I'm looking up <laughs> that it, you pronounce it Margarita. I don't know. I'm going to get back to you on that, but Margarita. friends call her Margo. Margo. And the significant person that like love lost teacher or whatever his name's gonna be gunter, Ooh, gunter. <gasps> i love that so yeah. much oh gunter. marco and gunter um and you regret what you did to poor gunter uh you you gonna think of a last name later or you got something yes okay not is there not is uh, <laughs> <laughs> kaiser the Ka- don't rule anything kaiser. out yeah there's a bill goebbels margarita goebbels uh <laughs> What, uh, <laughs> sorry, what, what, what about your Ross Rob? Anything jump on? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, so if you see that, see that poem again in that same school, tight schoolboy handwriting, uh, it just says to from Oberon Doyle to Vaughn Villiers. Vaughn Whoa. Villiers, nice alliteration. Vaughn uh-huh. Villiers from uh, what was it, Eagles? A- Eagles Grange. Eagles Grange. Von Villiers from Eagles Grange. Ah, uh, yes, the Villiers. Yes. Uh, awesome. Okay. And Rob, what is this disfigured con man's name? Carter Tillinghast. <laughs> Carter <laughs> Tillinghast. Tillinghast was in the book, but Tillinghast is his, uh, he took his wife's last name. Of the yes. Rhode Island Tillinghast? Yeah, of, yeah. Of the Gloucester <laughs> Tillinghast. Most respected uh, family. You know, it's and funny. Tillinghast, I think, is from like a Lovecraft story. I think there's a story that either he or one of his contemporaries wrote that's part of the mythos. Oh, nice. It's this machine that I might be getting this wrong, but it's a machine that stimulates the pineal gland in a way that. Oh, is uh, that from beyond? It opens up a rip into another dimension or something. Yeah. I think that's I think that's because I, I went deep into Wikipedia. I started with Cthulhu myth- Mythos today, but then I just ended up reading about all of Stuart Gordon's movies. Yeah, yeah. like <laughs> the best adapter of Lovecraft. And I'm pretty sure that's from beyond because they talk about the pineal gland like turning into some sort of like snake thing that comes out of <laughs> some from beyond. From beyond is a wild ass movie. It's awesome. It's I've so never good. seen. Oh, now I have to see this. Um, you know, there's all suggestions in this book of like, uh, as we get into different sections, like uh, suggestions about movies to watch. I'll send them to you if you want to get in the zone. Nice. But I mean, this is Indiana Jones meets James Bond. It's it's going to be, it's really going to be a wild ride. And now, 
our investigators are complete. Uh, obviously, you've got a little, little bit of homework to, to take your time and, and build the character you want. If you want to change some things, go for it. And then uh, uh, before our next session, I'll, I'll get a physical description for you. We'll get some character portraits made. And then we will jump in to the Rolls Royce, the Holy Grail, uh, Masks of Nyarlathotep. Uh, congratulations to the uh, hopefully American winner of this book. <laughs> um, sorry, well, well, you know what? Uh, to our Australian friends, we'll, we'll hook you up. It's an easy shit. We'll just ask them. Can you just send one to someone? Yeah, there you go. But, but for yeah. now, uh, congratulations. Please join us on a special night next Thursday for the first episode. We're, we're just diving right in uh, to this story next week. And then after that, every Friday, it will be time for chaos. Uh, have a wonderful night. Thank you to these amazing players. I mean, I knew this was going to be a great group, but now I'm, now I'm, I'm, now I'm just nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Good yeah, night, everybody. Reflux again. <laughs> yeah, just, it's the, it's the <laughs> small burps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, God.